Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Calling the meeting to order. Mr. Turner, you have the honor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Will you bow your heads if you're so inclined, please? Heavenly Father, there is wisdom in the Psalms. One of those sources of wisdom is Psalm 4610, which says, be still and know that I am your God. It deals with exaltation of the Almighty, but it also provides us insight today. We ask for stillness in times of strife, stillness in times of great passion, stillness in times of anxiety. Let us be still. Let us respect and revere this process as we do you. Amen. Amen. Would you please rise with me? In the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Good job as always. Okay, first thing on, on our agenda, every first meeting in December, we elect a chair and a vice chair. And that's what we're going to do. So um, are there any nominations for the chair? Mr. Chairman, I nominate you, John Paisley, as to be reelected as chair for the coming year. Are there any seconds? Second. A motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. We have, it's four to one, four yes, one no. Uh, the next is election for vice chair. I'd like to nominate Steve Carter as vice chair. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. It's 5 Thank you. Thank you again. Appreciate it, board members. Amen. Okay. It is truly our, and I'm talking about all five board members, pleasure to ask the Board of Equalization and Review to come forward. So if you guys would, guys and gal, <laughs> would come forward. I don't see anybody but Frank. We have three members. They may, the others may not have been able to get up. Um, <laughs> you know, he, won't be, that, he won't be here, Mr. Rainey. Uh, out of town. By get up, I mean capacity for this room. Uh, so are there others downstairs waiting? He just right. said there's only one missing. We were just planning on three this morning. All right, excellent. I just don't want to exclude anybody. This group and the two that are not here were exceptional. We had the review, and that was obviously <clears throat> a controversy at best. Uh, they did their job. Commissioners don't meet and determine the valuation. Uh, this board, if you appealed your valuation, did hear it, and they spent hours and hours and hours in that review and tried to uh, help anyone that uh, would listen to explanations you know, why those values went up. Uh, our tax folks met with them and outside sources as well to explain why the values went up so what I thought was dramatically. Uh, and I see them shaking their heads as well. <laughs> uh, but they handled the general public 
extremely well explaining to the, the general public what happened, what happened nationwide, and particularly Alamance County, a growing county, um, and what those values did. Gentlemen, I want to say personally thank you, and all five of us do. So I'm going to hand out some plaques. And then uh, either we'll stand behind you, but we want to make sure we get pictures uh, and things of that sort. Henry, you look so nice in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that. You clean up good. Man, amazing what you find. Oh my God! Would you say that into the microphone? <laughs> Okay, the chairman of this group is Mr. Frank Bell. Mr. Bell, we're going to hand this to you. Thank you, sir. Oh, you're not going anywhere. Just turn around and face the crowd, please. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Vines. And Mr. Vines has on a Christmas tie. I appreciate that. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. Mr. Danley. Yeah, again, congratulations. And his dad was always has been and will be one of my heroes. Aww. So, Dr. Danley. Okay, we also have Dean Rainey, who is not present, and Christian Faircloth, who is was not a, able to be here. Christina. So, Christina Fair, Faircloth. And we also want to say thank you to all five. They spent hours and hours and hours. Okay. Are you guys going to take pictures, or do we have a county person that will take pictures? And let's stand behind them, folks. We thank you. Uh, okay, Mr. Bell had a few words he would like to say, and we're recognizing the chair, Mr. Bell, at this point. Thank you. I am Frank Bell. I reside in the northern part of Alamance County. Thanks. We appreciate your recognition this morning, <clears throat> but a street has two pathways. And we could not have done the job that we were for, designed to do without the support of a few other people. The tax department compiles all the things that's necessary for us to make a decision. <coughs> the lawyer, Mr. Stevens, was involved in some of those decisions because we had some appeals that went beyond our jurisdiction. Ms. Frizzell is in the tax department. We thank her. Ms. Perkins, Ms. Isley, these are the people that give us the information that we've got to receive to make a decision. And I thank you for all of your support and hard work. Also, the Vincent employees that helped us make the decisions. And there's one thing that I want to reiterate this morning. If you went to work tomorrow and everybody that you faced didn't agree with what you had told them, <laughs> That sort of sets the stage for our problems or our decisions. It's not easy. It's tough. I want to thank everybody that's been a part of that, and especially you guys and Miss Heidi, your uh, your for making the decisions. And they're hard decisions sometimes 
we need to look at not what the cost is, but what the return is on our investment. You made a decision this year to bring in an organization that is expert, that's their field, and assessments and appraisals. I went through three evaluations in my tenure here. The final figures on 209 evaluation was 18,892 appeals in this county. <coughs> if you don't think that's a burden, sit and listen to them. The important thing that I want to, re to recognize this morning is the fact that you hired these people and for the first time in my, all, all of my involvement in the Board of Equalization, this has been the easiest that we've ever been through. And this year, we had 4,863 complaints. That's a far cry from 18,000. I'm telling you this, and I want the public to understand this. It's important that we have moved from 18,000 to 4,800. They call that progress. And believe me, it is progress. These people, and I'm going to share with you just briefly, I ain't going to take much of your time. This year, we had appeals of the notice of a value that we sent out was three billion three hundred and seventy seven million one hundred and fourteen thousand and seven hundred and seventy dollars. That's what we sent out as assessments for the county. The uh, appellant requested to reduce that amount to two billion five hundred and two million a hundred and seventy eight thousand five hundred and sixteen dollars. And these figures are available through the tax department. You probably have not been exposed to this, but I'm going to a point that I want to make. This includes consents and the people that we listened to, which was 480 appellants that come before the Board of Equalization. Their request was to reduce it to $873 million, and the Board listened to all these 480, which includes the, uh, the uh, consents. We didn't agree with that. So most of this consents is a reduction to start with. And that's the reason for consents. But when the board, when they come before the board, we hired Vincent and Company, and that's the best thing that we've ever done. As a result of that, we preserved the value. They requested us $874 million. And what we approved was $353 million. Now, what significant is that to us? Vincent and Company cost us money. We had to spend money to employ. As a result <coughs> of all these years, this year, 2023, not approving what the public asked for, we were exact, and I want to say this, the Board of Equalization 
It's not a negotiating board. We're there to assess <coughs> the facts. It's not a pity party either. We as a county has got to evaluate and be fair. If there's a mistake, we correct it. Then, not later, then. As a result of that, of being factual about everything we do, we added to the purse of this county this year two million two hundred and fifty four thousand five hundred and eighty nine dollars now let me share with you this is a return on investment now but revals is ever four years. Let's fast forward that. In the next four years, we will return to the county purse over nine million dollars. This is a return on an investment that y'all made a decision to hire. I've never, I went through three vows, and this is the easiest, for the simple reason we presented facts. Right. I've never, and the other thing that I like to reiterate is the fact, for the first time in that history I'm aware of this county, we showed the people, compare three comparables of property where that was in their area that is comparable to their property. We didn't do no guesswork. We had facts. That is the reason why we have progressed from 18,000 to 4,000 and some appeal. I invite you to look at one other thing, and I'm hushing. Return on investment is what this thing's all about. If we can't get a reasonable return on the decision that we make, we need to question our decisions. In 21, you guys approved a program in this county called Preservation Alamance. I'm not happy with the progress that we've made in the last two years. Farm Bureau and myself made a big contribution to that program to get it off the ground, and we like attention in that program. I'm going to share it with you, and I want you to take a look at it the opportunity for us to be self-sufficient in preserving farmland in this county. There is a program that's already been written. We need to invest in that and have representatives from this county that promote that. The folks, the return on investment is out there. These corporations that we're giving incentives to for this county need to help us pay for land that we're trying to preserve to produce food and fiber for their employees. I thank you for all you do for us. It's been a pleasure to serve this county and I hope that we've made the progress that is necessary and it don't stop here. Thank you for all of your participation. And we thank you, thank you. sir. Thank you, Mr. Bell. And we'll hang on to these other two plaques and we'll get it to your fellow <coughs> review board.
in the near future. Thank you. I'd like to also acknowledge uh, Judge Champion is present, uh, and he took off his robe Friday afternoon and is our new public defender. So, Mr. Champion, congratulations, or condolences, whichever are in order. <laughs> we thank you. Well, that's a position that is um, an incredible task. Uh, he's got a job ahead of him so far with no staff, unless you hire somebody between Friday afternoon and now. Uh, but a remarkable job ahead of you, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you. So, and Jeremy Atkins, uh, who's getting ready to duck out, thank is our director you. for taxes, and we thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Have a motion to second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Now, public comments. Let me explain before we get into public comments. Uh, by our procedure, it's limited to a grand total of 30 minutes. So once we reach the 30 minutes uh, allotment, then we have to, because it's, otherwise it's unfair to all the other people that are here and all the other folks uh, that want to be heard and recognized. Uh, so we'll limit that to 30 minutes. Uh, Ms. Walker, I understand you have a 30 minute clock up. Uh, and each speaker is limited to three minutes and that will also be on a timer. And so I ask, beg, uh, and maybe threaten. <laughs> no, don't make don't don't make me gavel you down. So at three minutes, please, as a public speaker, curtail your remarks. Okay. Jennifer Gauze. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Gauze. Is that pronounced correctly? G a u z e. Is that individual present? Okay. That was one that signed up earlier. Online. It looks like online. Um, Ed Perola. <coughs> Each speaker, please announce your name first and then your residence so we'll know that you're one from Alamance <coughs> County, hopefully. Uh, it don't have to be from Alamance County, but um, and the idea of, as to where you're from. And your time will start now, sir. Good morning. I'm Ed Priola. I live in Mebane. Last Thursday, the Alamance County Board of Education decried the, quote, inadequate investment in public education. It seems like investment is the word of the day. So let's look at some of the relevant numbers to investment. Alamance County has increased the dollars appropriated to ABSS in nine out of the ten recent years. Nine out of ten. In fact, ABSS received 62 percent more local taxpayer dollars in academic year as compared to ten years ago. 62 percent more in resources. Yet the level of ABS student population has remained the same, flat, for years the same level of students. Today I question the wisdom of putting ever increasing amount of taxpayer dollars in the hands of such an irresponsible school board. Irresponsible? That's a pretty strong word, isn't it? Well, it's a fitting word. Yes, I know. Uh, in, eight, in 2020, the report to the community by ABSS, they boasted <laughs> that the Alamance County was on top the top 10 for teacher supplements in 2020 out of more than 100 school districts across the country. It was only a short time later in 2021 and then again in 2022 that board members voted to divert $19 million from HVAC improvement funds to pay for one-time Christmas bonuses. Today I ask, what were the returns on those bonuses? What was the return on those investments? How many positions would have gone unfilled 
but for those bonuses. How many children would, were, were helped directly or indirectly by those bonuses? We don't have the metrics. In another egregious, irresponsible example, the same Board of Education voted to increase Superintendent Butler's salary to $218,400 a year. What was the return on that investment? That's while 17 out of 35 schools are failing or near failing. Today, once again, I ask why does the top ABSS administrator earn more than the governor of North Carolina? That seems out of whack to my opinion. Yeah, I won't be surprised to, to learn today that the members of the board won't personally answer the questions put to them by voters or the media, for that example, in their example last week in their press conference, a press conference that went offline when the questions were asked. So that said, holding the board member, uh, members of education accountable for their past irresponsible decisions is vital for you to contemplate when putting even more money in their hands. Thank you for your time. Thanks, sir. Leonard Harrison. My name is Leonard Harrison. I am from uh, 3161 Fieldstone Lane, Mebane, North Carolina. Now, I'm going to continue on Ed's point of view in the respect that we need to watch what we're spending and watch how it's spent. <clears throat> My problem is with certain members of our school board who have decided that they can just come back and misrepresent what is going on with the facts to the media and then coming out and bashing the people that are sitting on our county commissioner board because it is their job to make sure that they manage money. We went from five years ago with $4.9 million available in a fund to them that they say now today is $102,000. Now, there are contract after contract that can be shown that they have overspent on those contracts to the tune of $734 million in the last budget cycle. Now, we have fantastic members of our school board that are there to do the job and to take care of stuff and to make sure that the money's spent wisely. But we also have members making decisions on contracts that are open-ended without a final number. And if you sign a contract in business without a final number known in advance, you are a fool. Now, you may be a great individual, and I may love you to death, but you are a fool to sign an open-ended contract when you're talking about capital improvements. Now, we end up in a situation where we had mold remediation come out, and we had to take care of things. So I, un I absolutely speak on behalf of everybody in the county that I know of saying, yes, we need to pay the $5.2 million dollars that sits out there that's outstanding so that that's not defaulted on so that the county does not look like somebody that can't pay their bills. But with that being said, we evidently need to put people in charge of different departments within our school system that know how to run a budget and actually hit targets. Because if we can't hit targets, we can't be responsible with taxpayer money. Now we spend a ton of cash on our, the kids in this area, yet again and again and again, the same people who are saying, give me more money for my department are failing our children. And the same people saying, hey, look, we need to make sure we don't go back to schools too early are saying, oh, it's not my fault that our kids are failing because we went back way too late with the kids going back into schools. So. If we are going to stand here as a community and say, look, kids need to be taken care of, things need to be paid for, at the same token, we need to hold the departments within the ABSS that are not meeting budget requirements time and time again and can never seem to explain where that money is going within their little department. We need to hold them accountable. And maybe next time around when they request funds and say, hey, I need this, this, and this, it just doesn't come because we need to make sure that the taxpayers of this county are being looked after as well as the students. And we have amazing students and we have amazing teachers, but I find it ironic that the people who are claiming we don't have enough coming in are getting bonuses to administrators left and right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
<coughs> Sandley, Sa Sandy Lindley. Miss Lindley, they would stick you in the middle of the road, wouldn't they? <laughs> My name is Sandy Lindley, and I live in the city of Burlington. I've been an educator for over 35 years. Most of my teaching career has been in this ABSS school system. I am responding to what I heard online uh, for the county commissioner's meeting on November 20th. Never have I seen such blatant disrespect displayed by both Chairman Paisley and Commissioner Lashley toward two of our main administrators in the Alamance Burlington school system, Lowell Rogers and Greg Hook. This level of disrespect comes very close to what, in my opinion, would be called bullying. If I had been at that meeting in person, I would have stood up and called it out. This has shown these commissioners have a lack of respect for public schools, as well as for the professionals who run the day-to-day -day operations of our school system. So I must ask you both, is this the way you conduct yourself in your other business meetings? For Commissioner, and then for Commissioner Lashley to state that ABSS is adequately funded shows me he has not been in any of our schools looking at how they are run for a very long time. Chairman Paisley stated on live TV, quote, the school board comes before us every month demanding more and more money when we have adequately funded this school system. The reality is the board has come monthly to beg and plead to get money that is needed to sustain the day-to-day -day operations of our schools. Again, I wonder when Chairman Paisley has been in any of our schools to see what is really going on. The commissioners are responsible for the maintenance and the upkeep of our buildings. If you had done your job, you would have known what was going on, but perhaps you did and decided not to do anything. And yet still, no one here wants to take any responsibility. You all just point fingers at the school board and make the public believe that this mess was all due to poor money management on the part of the school board. Then Chairman Paisley and Commissioner Lashley demand answers where all the money went the school system had been given. Lowell Rogers tried to explain in detail how the money was spent, but neither of these men was listening to the facts being presented. They were simply too busy trying to intimidate Mr. Rogers and Mr. Hook. Not one time did either of these commissioners take any responsibility for the financial crisis of our school system in which they clearly displayed a significant role. As parents and teachers, we are always telling our children to take responsibility for their actions, admit what they've done, apologize, and then do better. How about our leaders start with a heartfelt apology about what our staff and students have suffered due to the lack of transparency and downright neglect to always do what is best for our students and our staff? Thank you. And we thank you. Shane, is it Roser? Roser. Thank you, sir. My name's Shane Roser. I live at 1241 South 5th Street, Mebane, North Carolina. I have a son at South Mebane Elementary. <laughs> Go Dragons. <laughs> See, we want to be proud of our schools. And I'm here to represent the parents and children of this entire county who desperately want a school system they can be proud of. We have given this body our trust and our money in order to provide that. Do better. Do better. I don't need to come here and tell you the importance of investing in our future, I hope. I don't have to explain to you why our kids are the most important resource we have, or do I? Alamance County Commissioners, you are not getting it done with 19%. You're not getting it done. Guilford County gets it. They invest 46% in their kids. Why are we only investing 19%? Do better, do better. Our schools have been underfunded, ignored, looked over and set aside for this body for the greater of three decades. This is glaringly obvious by the conditions they are in today. Pitiful, sad, gross, unhealthy, and way behind. That's how our schools are described. Do better, do better, do better, do better. Excuses, finger pointing, and playing the blame game will not fix this. Someone sitting in that seat is the reason we got this way. 
You are sitting in it today, so it is on you to fix it. I'm sorry. Can we please stop being the laughing stock of the state? Allocate funds to fix this. Do better, do better, do better, do better, do better. In closing, I ask that each one of you imagine one day looking back on today when your vote started the big turnaround for our schools. Give our county, our parents, our educators, and our children the schools that they can be proud of. Do better, do better, do better, do better, do better. We thank you. Is it Beverly Orwig? Yes. Thank you. My name is Beverly Orwig and I live in Elon. I'm a retired teacher of 34 years, 10 being with ABSS, a grandparent of two who attend ABSS, and an advocate for a resettled family and their three sons who attend ABSS schools. It is an understatement then that I have a vested interest in the school system. We who are educators and or have children or grandchildren have rolled with the punches of the underfunding of our schools, walls that have needed painting, HVAC units that have needed repairs or replacement, broken floor tiles that were applied with the help of asbestos back in the day, and yes, the mold. I have lived in this county nearly 13 years and taught at Turrentine Middle School for 10 of those years. I taught side by side with some of the most dedicated, passionate teachers. Additionally, my tenure at Turrentine was under the excellent leadership of Tara, Tara Miles, the best principal I have ever worked for. Many of the teachers I was privileged to work with have left this county seeking and retaining positions in other districts which pay considerably more. The best instruction is provided by teachers who feel valued, supported, and have talented support personnel who care about and care just as much for our county's children as the teachers. One of the five strategic initiatives posted on the Vision Alamance website is providing for a world-class education. It states in part that Alamance County understands the importance of education as the foundation for personal success and achievement, economic growth, and increased civic engagement. Alamance government is committed to supporting the infrastructure and strategic, strategic needs for Alamance Burlington school system. As duly elected leaders, you need to ask yourselves, is this initiative something that you stand behind and support, or are these words simply lip service? Yesterday, I looked up information by the North Carolina Division of Public Instruction, as the last gentleman already uh, alluded to. The recommended amount is approximately 26% of a county's annual budget. Alamance County provides only 19% of its annual budget to ABSS. There is a disconnect here between what the county states in regards to its commitment to education and how much funding is actually provided. We, the citizens of this county, are pleading for the school board and the county to work together to solve this budget crisis. We instruct our children and students to learn to collaborate and cooperate with each other as we know this will make them stronger problem solvers in the classroom and in their future endeavors and most of all, help them to become kinder and more respectful with their fellow human beings. We should not have to accept any less from you who are adults and leaders of this great community. We thank you. Tamika Harvey, if I pronounced that correctly. You did. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Tamika Harvey. I live in Burlington and I have three children who attend Cummings High School. I don't always agree with every decision that the school board makes and a lot of days I'm frustrated. But today I stand in solidarity with the Alamance Burlington School Board and asking the county commissioners to do what is right. Not what's right for you or me, but what is right for every child that attends a school within this county. Yes, you can continue to talk about how previous funds have been mismanaged and place that blame on someone. That does nothing but keep us here in a space where we're just staying stagnant and not moving forward. Just do what you said you were going to do. And that is, if ABSS uses their funds for the mold remediation, that you would give that money back. 
Well, now is that time. That time is now where ABSS needs that money back. If we could stop making everything personal, then we can move forward as a county and put our focus on what matters the most, and that is every child that attends a school within Alamance Burlington School System. Just do what's right for our children. Thank you. Sandy Ellington Graves. I didn't see you hiding behind. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Sandy Ellington Graves, 6349 Whitney Road. As I pondered my comments this morning, I looked back over the successes, the failures, and the choices, the challenges, and the words, and the actions over the last three years during my term on the school board. I choose to believe elected officials chose to serve because they care about Alamance County. I chose to run because I wanted to make a difference as a lifelong resident, an ABSS parent, and a local realtor since 2002. <coughs> Public education matters to me, to my children, and to my business. So this morning, I want to focus on choices. You say you support public education, and you should. It directly impacts property values, economic opportunities, public safety, future workforce development, and the quality of life of the 170,000 plus people that you serve. If I had one thing, one investment, that could impact so many variables across this county, why would I not choose to invest in it? Yes, we are back before you today to once again ask for money. We do want a stronger relationship with our county leaders, but we cannot continue to defend every decision that we make. Until this board chooses to learn from our history of working together rather than dwell in it, we cannot move forward together in a meaningful way. These past three years have brought challenges and choices. 2021 was the year of COVID, 2022 was the year of redistricting, and 2023 will become the year of mold. We made tough choices to tackle a mold problem that has existed for years. We have shouldered much criticism and the entire financial burden of a problem that you, Mr. Paisley, said you knew about when your wife was teaching in ABSS years ago. After three joint meetings several months ago, I, as many others, believed we had made much progress. Now there is no support to, remain the, to pay the remaining $5 million in mold remediation, to restore $3.3 million in our annual funding, and more than $18 million in capital reserves. To those of you on this board that have chosen time and again to consistently support public education, to be respectful and professional at all times, thank you. Your actions and your support do not go unnoticed. Simply put, leadership is a choice. I want to be known for courageous leadership during my term that made choices to put the children first. I ask each of you, what do you want to be known for? A low tax rate? If I were you, I would want to be known for choosing to put our children first because that impacts every taxpayer that you represent. When you vote today, oh, sorry. That's why we're asking for almost $9 million. And don't forget all of the projects that we have on hold until this board restores the millions of dollars in capital reserves. When you vote today, you will let all of us know, the taxpayers, where you stand. So I implore you to please choose wisely. And the last two things, first for public record, I emailed each of you ahead of our media announcement last week as a professional courtesy, because none of us like to be blindsided. Mr. Paisley, you indicated that you didn't know that and you did. Lastly, and I know my time is up, please be respectful and civil to our ABSS leadership today. You respect your people and we respect our, ours and they deserve better. Thank you. And we thank you. Let me remind you that we as county commissioners do not respond to public speakers at this point. At the end of our meeting, we will all have an opportunity to respond if any commissioner chooses. Um, that does not mean that we don't have consideration and concern about your uh, comments. It's that our procedure requires us to wait until the end of the meeting to make comments. Okay, consent agenda. Do motion. we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Have a motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent agenda passes. Ms. Donner. 
She, this is the item 8A on our agenda. Uh, it's via health update. And we thank you. Thank you for having me. My name is Kara Doner. I'm the regional director for Via Health. Oh, thank you. Uh, I work for Via Health, and for those of you who don't know, we are one of the state's managed care organizations. Um, we manage 32 counties across North Carolina. Um, we are in charge of managing the state's Medicaid budget um, for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities substance use disorders, and also foster care. Um, there's a lot going on in the state, a lot of transitions. Um, but every quarter, I update the county on um, how, how you're performing um, on treating people with mental health and substance use disorders. So I have a, a lot to cover, but I'll go through it, and hopefully I won't, I won't bore you, put you to sleep after our lively discussion we just had. So first, I just want to show you um, community hospital inpatient admission. So as you all know, um, we are currently working to, to help Alamance County build a diversion center, um, which will help with some of these numbers. But you can see um, mental health in blue and um, in orange, we have readmits. And you can see at the bottom, those are probably the most important <coughs> comments. So the county um, readmitted 7%, um, which is lower than the catchment readmit, and that means of, of all of our 32 counties. And this you can see SUD is substance use disorders, um, but you can see the numbers here um, on single readmits and admits. So the county is doing, um, is pretty high um, in some of these numbers compared to the catchment. Just something to point out. So um, every year, well, all the time, the North Carolina Department of HHS uh, monitors and has different performance suggestions for all the MCOs. So I just wanted to give you all an update on that. Um, so our goal is always to have a 40% um, readmit or to make sure it is under um, or above 40% um, for, for catching our readmits, readmits overall. So you can see Alamance is doing really well um, in this. Um, probably higher than, it doesn't have that number, but probably higher than the, catch, than the overall um, state. So we have uh, walk-in centers currently in, we have one walk-in center currently in Alamance County at Anna Elizabeth. Um, this just gives you a snapshot of how we like to see people service. So within 15 minutes, someone should be um, someone should be seen, and we have the different different times for time to assessment regarding um, how people are presenting, if they're emergent or urgent. So we have different. You can see different um, time windows. So within an hour, someone should be triaged if they're um, if they're presenting emergency. Um, symptoms. And you can see at the walk-in center by age group and intensity of need, um, most of the people we see at walk-in centers are adults. You can see um, the different numbers for child and adolescents and geriatric. Most are mental health. And here are members served by site. You can see Anna, Anna Elizabeth is the biggest um, so Anne Elizabeth is currently serviced by RHA, and RHA will also be servicing our new walk-in center. And this is type, so you can see that uh, most people are seen face-to-face -face and not on video. And this is the um, intensity of need and wait time, um, which are all great numbers that are seen within our contractual time for the state. And we also have mobile crisis within Alamance County. A lot of people don't know about that who have um, mental health and substance use needs. So um, anyone can call mobile crisis management, re regardless of it, with if you have uh, Medicaid or not. So that's just a service to know about. We are supposed to um, respond within two hours, but it's much less than that. Um, just to brag on RHA a little bit, um, you can see down below, the average time to assessment is 25 minutes. Um, a medium time to assessment is 17 minutes. So they are doing a really great job. Um, Freedom House is also a mobile crisis, 
crisis provider here. Um, but you can see that um, mostly um, we are seeing adults. And you can see of the two providers, RHA is, is probably, is obviously the biggest <laughs> provider in mobile crisis response. And you can see on the dis disposition by diagnosis group, um, just to give you an idea, um, we see mostly across the state, we see mostly outpatient. Um, and you can see it kind of goes down by that, by the, by the numbers, um, transfer to a hospital ED. And the reason for the diversion center is to get people out of the emergency, emergency department because sometimes they can be there for hours, if not days, um, not receiving the right care they need. So we're really excited about that project. And you can see facility-based crisis, state psychiatric hospital, um, down below only one person went to that within a quarter. This is disposition by age group, mostly adults. And then I'm happy to answer any questions. I know it's a lot. Would you tell us a little more about the Diversion Center and when it will open? Yes. So um, it is set to open in the spring um, of 2024. Uh, it's a beautiful building. Uh, we've walked through the, the guts of it. And outside, it's beautiful, but they're still working on the inside. Um, tell I, everyone where it is. So it's right across from Alamance Regional. Um, and we're working to have uh, transportation from the hospital to the diversion center because not everyone will be able to be serviced at the diversion center. If they have a physical health need that the physician on hand um, won't be able to address, they'll be, they'll be taken over there. Um, but it, it will be a great facility. Uh, we're working on what community partners will be in the diversion center right now, but we have peer support um, with NAMI. Um, we have a lot of great groups. We're hoping to have um, the health department in there, um, DSS, helping people get registered for Medicaid. So it, it will have a lot of great services. Um, we'll also be able to provide other things um, like AA counseling at night, um, different meetings will be able to be hosted there. So we're really excited. And um, there are two, yeah. actually two buildings, am I correct? Yes, yes. So one is for adults and one is for <coughs> children. So it's, it's really in an L shape. So the smaller side is for children. Um, and we'll also have a pharmacy in the middle, which is great um, for, for servicing people with, um, with pharmacy needs. Uh, it's, it will do so many great things for the county. So we're really excited. And I know that, that this all started way before VIA, so we're just happy to be a part of it. But and excited. it's so important to separate children from the adult services. Um, yes. And explain that. Yeah, so, well, you know, we don't know what the needs will be. Um, just for example, you know, we'll be working a lot with people in the reentry world. Um, so we want to make sure that children are safe. So we'll have different entrances. Uh, but children obviously have different needs. So we'll have, like, a waiting room for, for children and their families to triage what the children need. Um, but that's, it's mostly for our safety reasons is that, that those are separated. Sometimes having practiced law for literally 50 years, and unfortunately, probably 30 of those years, domestic cases, it's so important to protect the children. And if there's an offender parent, that those children not have to face that offender uh, as they're receiving help and treatment, which is one of the many reasons <coughs> that we have asked VIA to have two separate buildings. Yes, and, and we're, work very, we're working very closely with the Family Justice Center regarding abuse services, which is amazing because not every county has a Family Justice Center. But as, as you all know, it's a one-stop shop for abuse victims um, that houses the court system, health care, you know, resources for the family. So it really, it really makes the whole process less intimidating. So we'll be working with them and hopefully have some, some office space that they can use <coughs> when scheduled. Uh, Mr. Chair, the, right now, the easiest way to see the facility is to drive right by the intersection of Long Pine and Kirkpatrick. Yes. They're right, it's right there at that intersection. It's right in that. <coughs> if you come off Long Pine, it's going to be on your right. If you pass IHOP <laughs> and don't stop for pancakes, it's sort of right behind it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Are there any other questions? You, yes, I have one. <coughs> yes, did I interrupt you, Craig? No, no, please, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I'm just curious. Um, 
with working with this population. I know our county is not um, loaded with residential treatment places because um, many times the population that's dealing with this doesn't have the car to get into to go to do that. You know, it's, it's hard. It's homelessness is just everywhere. We, we're not remote from that. I mean, just, we're not Portland, we're not San Francisco, we're Alamance County, and we have our own. And um, I'm, I'm just curious as to, I know this is a diversion center, which means they're going to be diverted to the next level. Um, day treatment can really work for some if you've got all the things to go with it, a support system, a car, possibly a job, whatever that looks like. But for those, um, you know, the homeless population is the biggest population of mental illness there is. Families are wore out with them. They don't know what else to do. Um, you get on the streets, you learn how to survive. I think I've mentioned that I come to my church one morning and there was a lady with a grocery cart with a blanket over her head sitting on the bench. She'd been there at 5.30 in the morning. And she'd been on the streets for years. She told me she was pregnant. She was 54 years old and she wasn't. She said she was trying to get custody of her 23-year-old child. She was all over the place. Um, she didn't want to go to the shelter. She said she couldn't. Um, the police come, Burlington PD, they handled it perfectly. They had crisis training. They did their job excellent. But she didn't want to go anywhere except a motel room. Our church did that for her just to give her a night or two off the street. You know, you can't make anybody get better. You just can't. I work with drug addiction. I can't make them stop using. If I could, I already would have. It's a real burn inside of the stomach of a gut of a person that wants to do better. And that is so not easy to do if it is you. And I'm just curious, where are we going to send all of these people? Because um, I worked with uh, Help Incorporated out of Rockingham County one time. I went up there to visit their elder abuse thing. And it's been years ago. And she told me, she said, Pam, you better be careful because when you open that door, it's going to flood through. Because we don't even think about the elderly being abused except you got a hole in your roof, let me fix it. And there was never another hole and they prosecuted him in the courthouse. Um, we got real serious issues. And I hate to give a virus credit for it, but it didn't help with our children, our suicide rates, the isolation, the, the work ethic being destroyed, just one after another. And I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. But I'm just curious, like, what is, what is this right. county going to do about where we're going to stay? Because living free has a limit. Uh, residential treatment has a limit. They do great detox work. I've sent several people there. What do we do? Because I don't know if we really understand the amount of people that we're dealing with that once they hear, thank God they will, are going to start coming and getting help somehow and get into that door. What can you help me with? And that's not a fix. The four to seven days, the 16 beds, that is all wonderful. But you don't fix that, just like you, jail doesn't fix some people unless they really learn. So I'm just curious as what's the next level for Alamance County with somewhere for us to really send these people. I took people to Butner, to Blackley, Wayne, everywhere that does this kind of work. And we don't. And we've got to have something like that. As ugly as it is, expensive as it is, if we're going to commit to a diversion center, we've got to commit to the whole ball game. We just can't, well, good luck. You've had your four to seven days. Because um, these folks may get their medications that they hadn't been on forever, and they may go to the streets and sell them to buy more drugs to use. This is an ugly part of this. Law enforcement can back me up on everything I'm saying. So what are we going to, what, Kara, help me understand how we're going to really get the whole picture of this disease, because it is a disease. It is, and you're a saint for all the work that oh, you've Lord done on this. Mercy. No. So um, let me just say that. Well, you know, it's a process. Yeah. So this is a start. You know, we really need to reduce the stigma and, you know, help people understand what, what this is, what substance use abuse is, you know, helping parents and schools to understand what they need to be looking for with their kids because it's a problem. It's a problem across the entire nation, the, the entire state. But you're right, it's hard sometimes to find facilities. Yeah. You know, I'm definitely not going to sugarcoat that. Um, but via, we have, you know, facilities all across the state and some have, you know, we have a waiting list for. Yeah. And it's just, it's just a sad reality of our state. But I think it's a great starting point. I think it will help address um, the needs, more of the needs. And so if there's a residential need, which there probably is, that can be discussed next, you know, about what, what really needs to happen in the county. But 
I mean, I think it, I think it's a great starting place. Well, I hope so because um, our leadership can't fool ourselves into thinking, well, we have solved that problem. Right. You never solve a problem because the next is always there. So I appreciate you guys. You and Donald <coughs> Roos, I'll stand with you all day long because I know He's your awesome. hearts. So. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Lashley. I have no questions, but thank you so much for your presentation. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. I needed an thank update. You. Thank you. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Turner, just a couple of basic questions. Yes. Um, we keep calling this a diversion center. I don't think that gives the citizens of Alamance County much information about what happens inside of there. So am I correct that we're talking about mental health services? Yes, and I'm glad you bring that up because we need to name the center and we want to have behavioral health in it if possible. So how is behavioral health different than mental health? Or well, are they different? I, yes, they're different. I think behavioral health to me really encompasses the whole person. Um, you know, it's not only it's not only mental health, but it could be you know anxiety. It could be substance use. It really encompass, encompasses the whole thing. Um, so you know, behavioral health. You know, you can think about children in schools, children who are homeless, yeah. who are doing their homework in parking lots um, that need an addi additional assistance. So um, it's really looking at the whole picture, whether that's empowering the students or the teachers or the parents to, def to define where that problem is. But I think this will be a great first step to bring people in and, you know, get them assessed to find out what their needs are. So mental health, behavioral health, substance abuse, that yes. pretty much covers the services in there? Yes. And I'm sure we'll be addressing things also like signing up people for Medicaid because that is going to be a huge process. So, um, you, you come, yeah. so if you have an, a problem that is that you need treatment now, you come to this place. Yes. You're, you can come yourself. Law enforcement can bring you. A relative can bring you 24 hours a day to get assessed and then to get immediate treatment. And how long can you stay there if, if needed? Um, well, you can move from different aspects. So okay. um, I believe it's... 23 hours. Okay. Um, don't quote me on that. Uh, is, there, is there an extended stay, a, a beds for extended stay at all? Um, yes. So I believe we'll have 16 beds okay. by law. You can't have any more than that or it becomes a, a, a hospital. Okay. So we do have limits. And so once you're connected to those services, then the idea is that there would be additional groups located at the facility that you could then connect with for yes. more long-term systemic care yes like like a peer support group right so and you mentioned yeah. medicaid so if somebody come in and they don't know that they're qualified for medicaid but there's a dss person there yes. then they can they can see what those qualifications are and then if if applicable apply for medicaid and just use that as a center where, where you can can receive care in a number of different ways is that the yes. general idea yes okay. and i and i see this as a resource hub right. So, you know, with Medicaid, you know, just, just to give you an example, so um, when people can choose, only about 9% of the state chose their providers. So with, with you know, people being able to choose again, um, there are a lot of different options. So, and um, just so everyone understands, so the state decided that we needed to be under a whole person care. So right now, VIA just med manages people with mental health. Um, and like a Blue Cross Blue Shield just does physical health. So the state decided that both VIA and a Blue Cross should be doing whole person care. So mental health and physical health. So um, VIA, you know, that's called tailored plan. So when we switch over to tailored plan, we've had some delays. But when we switch over to that, VIA will be caring for the most um, critically ill patients. Um, where a Blue Cross will be caring for people who have like anxiety, ADHD, um, different things like that. But again, people will get to choose. So people who will choose a more standard plan like Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, they'll have different options. Um, families can get childcare, they can get you know different educational help, they can get mentoring for their children, but they will have a choice. So this, this diversion center, behavioral health center, will help give them resources so they can choose what care they need. Thank you. Mr. Carter. Well, and another, um, Mr. Turner didn't leave a whole lot of questions left to be asked, <laughs> I don't believe. But anyway, um, one of the things I, I I think we need to make sure everybody knows, too, is there will be security there. Yes. Um, one of the problems that the Divergent Center is designed to help us with is the fact that in the past, if law enforcement delivered somebody to the emergency room, the uh, law enforcement officer had to stay with that individual until they were moved into a facility and were properly 
protected from themselves. So that could be somebody off on duty tied up for 24 or more hours. And now that's not going to be the case. So uh, there were so many issues that we were trying to trying to address with this one facility that, uh, as, as you've just indicated, uh, so many of these are going to be taken care of. Not all of them, as um, Ms. Thompson just pointed out. They're not all taken care of, but this is one step forward. Yes, yes, a huge step. But security will likely have a separate entrance, um, right. depending on who they're bringing in. So, yeah. Oh. And this has been a project that, I guess I'm next, <laughs> uh, that these commissioners have been working on and the prior commissioners worked on very, very long and hard. Uh, I am really pleased, spring of this year, right now our center is not 24 hours. Um, so if you um, have a crisis, uh, you better wait to the right hours right now. That will not be the case in the very near future. And I look forward to that. And everything that VIA, uh, REI, and all you folks, social services, have all worked together and accomplished. And I look really forward to the spring. Thank you. Well, you have amazing staff. Uh, all across the county that we have really enjoyed working with. So thank you. Chairman uh, Paisley, I just yes, want to add something to Steve and Craig um, about the the child part of this. Uh, the last year I was on the uh, <laughs> last year I was on the board of education. Bikini Vento was serving over 700 homeless children. That's just ABSS, and homeless is not under a bridge with a sign. Will you know help me? It is couch hopping, it's, it's everything you can imagine. Living in your car, just name it. You know, we, we just put one more thing on the back of a kid and expect them to go to school the next day and just kill it in their classroom. It's really hard to um, make those grades or even show up when there's no heat, no water, no food, and you know, getting to the bus is a big deal. And uh, we have to realize that um, everybody's house isn't all decorated for Christmas and packages are wrapped. That's just, sometimes that's just fantasy, it really is. But um, I know when we had the McKinney Vento Christmas thing at occasions, and we were all in there, this, I, I just love it. We were all in there, Dr. Monroe, Dr. Thor, everybody was in there, and um, when you walk in, you don't know who's homeless in that room because everybody's in there having dinner. And this is like this room. We don't know who's in a crisis in this room. You don't know what tragedy somebody sitting beside you on a church pew is going through. You just don't know. But the key is to not deny it and act like it's not there. Because um, I don't know about this world, but I'm really sick and tired of the way our kids are being treated. And then we want to blast them for the way they act. Because they are us. Whatever we do, we're their one-on-one -on -one training book of this is what you do, and it's acceptable, and it's getting younger and younger. When our suicide rates for young people have tripled, when I saw DSS abuse reports triple out of COVID, and, you know, they're just not, they're just not numbers and writings on a piece of paper. Those are human lives that are going to run this world one day, and if we keep screwing them, the world is not going to make it. And I, I'm, I'm just... I know everybody probably feels the same way, but we keep doing a number on kids, and we want to know one why they act that way. They act that way because we have taught them to act that way, and it's getting really old because we are doing something in this generation, and look at them. They're on the streets. Whenever you would rather go sell weed and be in a gang than go to school, that tells you that offers you more than where you're coming from, and I'm going to hold mom and dad to it. I'm holding myself to it. We are their instruction book. And don't be blaming the schools, don't be blaming the government, blame what we're looking at. Because whatever's in that home is gonna walk in that school. I take this so personal. And we're gonna have all this diversion and all this help, but until that home is solid, it's not gonna make it because it's got to work all together. It's gotta to work all together. You throw your churches out of schools, you're throwing everything out. It's just gonna be one of them days. I'm sorry. I, no, I'm it's sorry. okay. I, I'm with you, and sorry. you have all these teachers here. Or I was the over at Sellers Gun last week, bringing in clothes for young boys that I know if they want to get in Deca or they want to get in stuff like that, what they're gonna wear? You know, just show up looking good. How are you gonna do that? You know, if you're homeless, how are you gonna take a shower and get a job? <laughs> we just only see. 
the homeless ugly. We don't see the how to fix that. It's still up to them, but it's still, it's, it's power and unity. You know, I tell people I work with all the time, I will walk with you through your recovery. I can't do your recovery for you. I want your recovery more than you do, but you got to want it. And it's the same way with everything. It's the same principle. We have got to do better by our kids because, um, you know, every day you turn around and you see abuse. It's just off the chart what people are doing to children. Hell's not going to hold everybody. That's all I'm going to say. The road is wide, and it's getting wider. And DOT ain't got nothing to do with paving it. Put that in there for potholes. So that's another issue. It's just one of those complaint days. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> well, if there are no other questions. I'll hush. No, you're fine. Thank we, you for having me. We thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Dr. Butler, are you next? Mr. Hook is presenting next for ADSS. All right, thank you. I'll join in as needed. Chairman, Mr. Paisley, uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, the, the item I have here for you today is a request uh, for you to approve uh, three needs-based grants. Uh, these grants require the signature of the Board of Education Chair and the Board of Commissioners Chair. Uh, I had submitted some numbers uh, prior to uh, the agenda uh, or, or for the original agenda, but since then I've revised my numbers uh, and I provided to Mr. Walker handouts, and I think you have them here. I want to explain the difference in the numbers uh, as I speak about these grant requests. Um, so uh, I had never done one of these matching grant requests before, and I based the county's match off of the total uh, and found out uh, uh, as I went along that I needed to base the county's match off of the grant amount, not off the total amount. So that's why you have new numbers here under the column required county match for grant. This actually pushed the amount down for each grant uh, that I'm requesting uh, for the county to uh, provide as a match. And that's a 15 percent, if I remember correctly. Is that um, the number? The, yes, it's 15 percent, and I have an attachment uh, shown here right under the table uh, that, that shows uh, all the counties in, this, in the state and how much each county would have to match. Uh, so um, I want to speak about each of these grant requests and the reason I'm submitting these specific grant requests. Uh, each year, uh, the state uh, has a bucket of money for needs-based grant requests from uh, school districts across the state. Uh, they have a rubric that they use to evaluate their grant requests. And some of the things in the rubric uh, that would cause these schools to be, I think, in the running to receive a grant are things like they're enlisted in, in the uh, five-year uh, facility needs document that was produced in 2020. So each of these were in that document in some way, and I'll speak more about that. Another part of the rubric is uh, are these projects in design or is an individual project in design or further along in the design mm -hmm. process? For instance, you may have construction documents. That helps you to get points on the rubric. Uh, and then another uh, item on the rubric used to evaluate is, are you a tier one county? Our county is not considered tier one. That would be counties with the most poverty. We're considered a two, tier two county. Uh, and then the, um, um, the, the other uh, piece I want you to know about these grants in the five-year needs assessment, Hall River Roofing was in the 2025 year needs uh, assessment for roof, roofing specifically. So that would give us some points on the, the grant rubric. Uh, B. Everett Jordan Roofing was also in the five-year needs assessment in 2020 for roofing needs. Graham High School was not in the uh, 2020 uh, facility needs report for roofing. It was in there for HVAC. So we already had uh, capital reserves and bond money in place for the roofing project. But for the purposes of the grant, I've created it based on HVAC and roofing because I felt like that would give us some more points on the rubric. So would we get these grants if they're submitted? I feel like we would be fortunate to receive at least one of the grants, but I felt like by submitting three individual grants, they would each be scored and it would get us uh, in the running to receive some of these funds. For the folks in the audience, uh, both online and here, explain what the rubric is. 
It's a scoring instrument. So uh, th as they evaluate your each grant request, they would give you points based on the things that I had just mentioned, and then they would take the total points and determine who, who receives the grant money. It's so a scorecard. It's a scorecard. Yes, sir, that's <laughs> correct. So uh, things that you can put into this uh, 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 grant request uh, for needs-based uh, grants, uh, you can do things like a new school, a new middle school, a new high school, or a new elementary school. We didn't have anything like that in the facility needs plan, and we don't have any in design. But there will be some counties in this state that will receive big money, somewhere up near $60 million, um, if, if they were lucky enough to, to receive one of those. But I felt like because we're a Tier 2 county, and I'd looked in the past at some of the Tier 2 counties that received money, they received money more in line with these kind of things. A couple more things I want to mention here. Um, for... Uh, the, the um, project total, what I've also done here, and I've noted it at the bottom of the sheet you have, is uh, based on the escalation that we've seen in price and, and we've experienced that together as I've had to come back multiple times to request increased funds for projects where the bids have come outside of the, uh, the budget. Uh, I inflated each of these or increased each of these project totals by 10% just to accommodate for escalation in pricing since the budget number was come up with. Uh, by the Board of Commissioners uh, several years ago. Mr. Chairman, may I make a comment? Yes, sir. Um, one of the things that was pointed out in the uh, capital oversight meeting is that these 42 classroom air, air conditioning units will be re not only replaced but moved off the roof to off to the side of the building so that the problems that we've been experiencing with people walking on the roof to service the HVAC can be eliminated because they can get to the units beside the building as opposed to And additionally, the weight of the units themselves. That's true. Yeah, weakening the structure. Oversight Committee met Thursday, and uh, Mr. Hook made that presentation there, and just for this board's consideration, the Oversight uh, Committee voted unanimously to approve these grants. Uh, that was the Oversight Committee, but not this board. Right. And that's why you're here today. Yes, sir. <laughs> One last thing I'll, I'll point out, and I made a note here uh, listed as item B at the bottom, uh, the B. Everett Jordan Roofing, uh, B. Everett Jordan Roofing Project. Uh, so far, we have only allocated design fees uh, for that, $52,000 um, $52, uh, for design fees. Um, so what I used was the original budget price or budget cost that was in the uh, top 10, next 10 list, and then increase that by 10% to create a project total for that that project. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve this request. I'll second that motion. I have some, just some yes. questions, Mr. Chairman. First of all, Mr. Ruggott, I, I applaud you in, in this line of thinking. I mean, this is creative, a great idea to seek these grants. Um, I just want to go through each of these projects. Yes, the, the Hall River Roofing Project, we've We've already allocated funds for that, right? Yes, there are capital reserve funds uh, allocated for that project already. So if, if we get this grant, then we would refund whatever we'd allocated back to what, capital reserves for other, yeah, yes, other sir. projects? And I have the original amount uh, allocated listed under original budget. $1.9 million is what's sitting in capital reserves for that project. So far, we've only spent some design fees there. That project goes out the bid on the 12th. Okay. And the Graham High School roof, this, the same... The same question. We've already allocated funds to cover the entire cost of that. So if we get this grant, we would just pay a portion of that, and whatever we had already allocated would go back into capital reserves. Uh, yes, sir. We had, you, you've allocated $5 million for that. And it, each of the figures that I would consider to be savings if we would receive right. the grant is listed in the far right column. But on the Beaver Jordan roofing, you said we've allocated 52000 Yes. There's, there's a match here of 345000 So yes. where would that come from? Uh, that would, would the balance to, come from? to be determined. It Do we have be, to determine that today? I don't think so, because I, I, what, what we need to do is see uh, the grants have to be submitted by the 5th of January. Okay. If we receive the grant, uh, then we'd have to come up with those funds. Right. Um, so um, that would be a decision to, to be determined later. And if you receive more than one grant, and if B. Everett Jordan was a part of those two, or three, then you could use the savings from the other project that we just talked about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, I will mention, since you're you're speaking about 
Hall, Hall River also. We have the current Hall River masonry project, which is complete. We're waiting on the, uh, the final uh, pay application there, but we have just over $200,000 that will be left in, in that project that will go back to capital reserves. Um, do we and that was a Sasser project, uh, I think. Is that correct? No, the Hall River Masonry was a, uh, a restoration company that was oh, working I'm on sure. the masonry joints. Uh, do we not need uh, contracts in order to apply for the grant? No, sir. Okay, just an estimate. Yes, sir. The points on the rubric come from having it in design or out of design or your construction documents from your design engineer, but okay. it doesn't imply that you have to have a contract. And are, are we ranking our requests? No, sir. I'm going to submit them as three separate okay. so that they would re review them individually and they would bump them against the rubric. One, one other way the, the rubric gives you points, if you haven't received or applied for needs-based grants in the last three years, you get some points there as well, which we have not applied for any. Thank you. Well, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> this is for the 23-24 calendar year, or school year, budget well, year too, right? That, they like usually that. make the decision in February, right. and then they would allocate the funds and you could get moving. Each of these projects uh, are in play uh, to, uh, to play out beginning in 2023. Um, like the Hall River, all the design is done for the roofing and it goes to bid um, on the 12th. We'd like to start that one at the beginning of the month. But like Mr. Turner uh, mentioned, we already have capital reserves there. These funds would supplant other funds if we got them. That's a real win-win. And just to talk about the age of our schools, I was in the fifth grade at Beaver Jordan. So that should tell you right there, dinosaurs <laughs> were parked out back. So our schools have some serious age on them. Mr. Lashman. Uh, no, uh, Mr. Turner stole my thunder. That's the two questions <laughs> that I had, uh, but I appreciate that. No, thank you very much for uh, for bringing that up. Um, I just want to ask a time frame. If you uh, apply for these in January 5th, uh, when do you expect to hear back from? I, they, they make the decision in February, so okay. they would alert schools if they receive the grants. That's it for me. Thank you. Thanks. Mom. Final comments, I want to congratulate you, Dr. Butler, the school board, for applying for these grants. Uh, that shows that we're working together. It shows that we're all pulling for our children uh, and trying to think, make the money and things go smoother and better and working together. I thank you. Yes, sir. Any other comments? All in favor of this motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> it's unanimous. Thank you. Thanks. Do you have the next item, or is that Dr. Take a 10-minute recess. Oh, we, we're asking for a 10-minute recess. <laughs> we'll, we'll adjourn for just 10 minutes. Um, we'll be back in 10 minutes. Thank you. We're back in session. Dr. Butler, are you presenting now or someone else? Presenting on behalf of ABSS, I will step in as they can do. Thank you. Good morning again, sir. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Chairman, Mr. Paisley, on the uh, agenda, uh, the, the same presentation that I presented uh, at the last Board of Commissioners meeting is, is linked there. Uh, I'm glad to go through it in full or in abbreviated form or uh, share any other information that you request. I would plead with you, either abbreviated or we've already had it. <laughs> uh, I don't see a reason to go all through that again in its entirety. I, I, I didn't see reason to go through it at the end. I think it's already been mentioned uh, uh, in uh, several meetings about the, the amount of our ask uh, to uh, meet the uh, outstanding mold remediation costs and then also our request uh, to re replace uh, our, our PAYGO funding, um, that we had already spent some of that at the time of the uh, remediation, uh, and then we also had some uh, planned projects that would have been done out of that PAYGO funds. Do you have other information that you'd like to provide before we start asking questions? Uh, well, um, Ms. York had asked me uh, several weeks ago to provide a, a bond uh, a bond funding update, and I had done that, and I, that's what I had anticipated would be of interest as well. 
Ms. York, you want to speak to that or? No, I sent that have. out uh, right after I received it. And so right. we've had that now for, for several weeks. If there are questions, then happy to just to talk about it in detail. Thank you. So M Mr. Uh, Walker ha has that, uh, uh, that, that file and uh, we have it in a summary, a summary format. And then also I have it for each, each of the bond sites. It really shows what's, what's left or what's remaining at each of the bond fights, bond, bond sites, and also how uh, I came up with these figures. So I think that would at least be of interest to look at a couple of, a couple of those slides. Uh, Mr. Walker, if you have the, uh, the one that says uh, a bond, uh, it's the presentation um, the bond update, uh, I forwarded it to you in email. Bond update dollar, just bond only. Bond, bond only. And then that would circle us back to this one. I think this is supplemental to what I had shown you in the, in the last, last meeting. So I had shown this um, this presentation in our uh, one of our most recent uh, Board of Education meetings to provide an update because I thought it would end up coming here. Uh, so on each of these slides, uh, it's very similar to what I've done uh, for you all in the past. I just indicated the uh, the bond site, uh, and then I listed what's what's remaining, uh, and then. Uh, a little uh, information at the bottom about the the remaining funds at at the project so all of all of the uh, uh, the bond sites are near near to completion or complete and we're just awaiting some of them on our closing documents which, which would be our final pay application from the uh, contractor but we'd also then receive the closing documents that includes all the warranty warranty documents uh, for the warranty items and any kind of manuals that might come with any of the equipment in the in the schools so i'll just show you a couple of these and if uh and if you see that they're redundant then we could move on but this is an example so pleasant grove elementary uh i listed uh when i prepared this the remaining work uh the, the first thing the hvac tab report and final setup has been done so that's off the list the HVAC's running there. Uh, we have in progress the cameras and key card access uh, and the vestibule and transaction window. That's the security vestibule at the front. Uh, so that's, uh, that's all that's left at that bond site. We already have contracts in place for the cameras uh, and key cards there. And then the, uh, the vestibule work is with the original contractor. So that's part of the original contract price. Uh, so there's no more money that's going to be allocated to those things. The one thing that I did list there that's remaining that I'd like to get done at that site uh, is finishing the window replacement. And I've mentioned that uh, ever since I, I, I took this job, that the, the original uh, bond uh, project and the, um, the contract that went along with that did not include all of the windows at the school, uh, but for around $345,000, we could do all the windows on the on the back side of that school and be what I would consider a complete school. I had put that on one of the early lists that I had brought here uh, where I listed the top 10, next 10, and what came to be kind of my top 29 items, and that, that was on that list. So I just put it out there. It doesn't have to be done, but, it, but it's of interest. Uh, underneath where I show the remaining funds, I'm just pa painting a picture of how I, I come up with the number that's on the final spreadsheet that Mr. Walker had already um, foreshadowed there and that you have on your desk. Uh, so uh, what, what I see is left here. Uh, we, we think that we have $1.2 uh, million left in this project. And that comes when we look at our, our information in my office and we compare it to uh, Ms. Evans' information. Now there's always not, it's not exact all the time because as we're processing uh, invoices in my office, we record it, then it has a pathway through our uh, central office location, then it comes here, and then Miss Evans' office would pay it. So there's a time lag between what I see and what she sees, and then she's not paying the tax. But over in my office, we're recording the full value of the invoice with the tax. So uh, it's it's really pretty accurate. So the 1.242 uh, million actually came from Miss Evans' uh, budget sheets. And then the remaining expenditures, what I've done there with the uh, $696 million is all I've done is I've added up all the money that I expect 
that will need to spend there to finish it. That would be the final pay application for the contractor, the pay apps to finish the cameras, and any other residual kind of items there. But it doesn't include the, it does not include the three hundred forty-five thousand dollars for the windows. Just in case somebody's listening, you just said six hundred ninety-six million. You meant six hundred ninety-six thousand. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> yes. Six, thank you. Um, six hundred ninety-six. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, that 150,000, where I'm calling it unprocessed expenditures, 150,000, that is what I saw at the time I prepared this is the difference between what we had in my office and what Miss Evans' office had. But we feel like the invoices were between between the offices, and I feel like that's very accurate. So at the bottom line, what I see left in this project when it's done exclusive of the 345,000 that I'm interested in for the windows is uh, $394,000. And I've done that similar thing for, for each of the uh, uh, each of the sites. Um, this one is done. Uh, this is South Mebbin. Uh, I, I have a suggestion there that we do need $850,000 to complete the roof. There's a section, a large section of the roof that leaks there. Uh, it needs to be done. If it doesn't get done out of some sort of remaining bond funds, it would be on uh, Mr. Baker's list of top 20, and it would probably be in the top top 10 for sure. Graham High, they have a few more things that are left to do there. Um, so um, we're working on finishing the hardware on the uh, security security gates and doors there. The hardware is on there, but there's some finishing touches that has to be done. Um, I've got on here that we need to bid uh, the cameras and key card access. The estimate's $350,000. We haven't spent any money on that. We did take bid, the bids uh, last week, and we know what uh, the price of that would be. Um, and then um, this next item, uh, the panel replacement for the uh, Alamance Community College welders. At the time this contract was done and the design was done, the designer anticipated just what I would call standard welders. This is a joint venture between ACC and the school system where they would have Alamance Community College classes taught here. Uh, so fast forward about three years from the time that the design was done till the uh, ACC ordered their welders and they, I would just say they ordered su supercharged welders that don't work with the, uh, uh, the power that we have there. So we have to uh, have our engineer and he's already working on this and they're about finished to redesign the, uh, the power system there to get us a different uh, type of uh, breaker to get us to up to 1,000 amps. That money has to be spent there, and it's going to be between sixty dollars and $90,000. So that's not, that's ACC's welding program for the kids in schools, our kids? Like yes, but they would also have, I think, classes right. there as well. And so there wasn't preparation to see what kind of wiring that should be before those welders were bought? Well, yes, yes and no. Okay. Uh, so the, um, when the... Uh, the design company that, that got this contract uh, mm -hmm. worked with this about three years ago. We had no idea, and this was before I was here as well, right. what kind of welders would be put in there. The engineer designed the system for what I'd call standard welders. Um, and then even when I got here, ACC had not selected the kind of welders that they wanted to use. And that was, I'd just say, a long process. Yeah. Once they selected and purchased and got them in, um, we didn't have enough power there. So the original uh, contractor and their engineer is having to redesign the power system to be able to supply enough power um, to to run those welders. Well, my son's in the welding program. It's excellent. I can't send up most of it, but yet this will be a cost on the school system, right, to upgrade that? Yes, it would come out of the, uh, the, the, fund, the bond funds. Okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, then the, the next item I have here, I've mentioned in meetings here before, we really need to repave the back driveway at, at Graham High School. It's it's in terrible shape. Uh, we we uh, had we put it out to bid one time and it, we got a bid of $430,000, which was more than we uh, could spend at the time. And I don't I don't think we have the funds there to spend that now, but that would be on the, the list of things that we do need. So anyway, remaining, remaining fund he, funds here look a little different uh, and that's why I wanted to walk through several of these because I have the uh, 4.8 million that uh, comes from Miss Evans budget documents over here with the county and then what I see is remaining expenditures that would be the final payments to all the contractors 
Uh, and then unprocessed processed expenditures would be the things that we've saw that we've seen the invoice in our office, but they haven't made it through uh, Ms. Evans' budget sheets yet. Uh, and then I've also subtracted out what I'm calling roof funds here because this is one of the sites where capital reserves were moved out and bond funds were moved in. And because it's a bond project, now those bond funds or show, if I look at this, uh, this budget sheet, it's inflated by $3.97 million because those are the, the roofing funds that were moved in there through the, all the, the, the uh, joint sessions that we had uh, to take care of the mold. So I'd want, we want to make sure we subtract that out. So at this time, uh, we have $587,000 remaining in, in this project. That does not include the, uh, the breaker replacement. Southern High, uh, we've got a bid uh, for the cameras. Nothing's done on that yet. Uh, the uh, grading work has been done, and then there's an estimate for security walls. The security walls were not put in into this project from the beginning. I don't think they, they thought they, they had enough money in the budget to do that. So really, there's nothing there that has to be done, but the, the couple of items that uh, should be considered would be the cameras and the, and the security wall. And I have that on the summary sheet that you have. Um, Mr. Hook, can I just interrupt for a second? You, keep, you talk about security, and, and I'm, I mean, push for live shooter drills, all that in the school systems years ago. Um, are all of our schools, do they have blinds? Because well, I know yeah, I think yes it was and, Eastern was yes talking and no. about new blinds because it don't you know if you're you got you got some people walking on campus with an AK and they're trying mm -hmm. to take some people out and there's those blinds are not closed or those glasses are wide open, that's not good for who's sitting in that classroom. And I, I know that's a small thing as compared to an HVAC or a roof or a wall or pavement, but it's not a small thing in our our you know our safety. Safety's everything. We just see this all the time. I don't want Alamance County to be on the news about a school shooting. Mm -hmm. And so I was just curious about blinds, how that's looking. Is that part of the bond or part of PAYGO, or where does that come in? Well, um, in reference to the to the bond, if you go back to the original intention of the mm -hmm. bond and the things that yeah. might have been provided, right. security upgrades like the cameras and the key cards and the security walls and listed on there also was some roofing. And most all of the sites that listed roofing and then most all of the sites it listed blind replacement, but they didn't put blind replacement in to the to the original contract because I don't know that they knew they could have afford it. Right. So they would. I, my, I'm just thinking I wasn't here then. They would have been thinking at the back end. Let's see if we can really afford it. Uh, in response to do we have blinds? Uh, you, all the schools have blinds, but uh, lots of the schools have blinds that are broken. Uh, some won't work, and then some pieces are missing. Uh, for example, at, at Southern High. The majority of the school has the original blinds that came with the school yeah. back, back, I guess, in the late 60s. Well, it's just kind of like we don't do the little things mm -hmm. good, we don't do the big yeah. things, and it's a very vital part of that security. Um, but I will say, since we're on this subject, anywhere we did an addition or window replacement, uh, you got new blinds. I and then you. in the ESSER project, it's wherever you do a window replacement. Thank yes. you. Okay. So here, uh, the, the, the math is similar to the, to the last one I showed you. You have the remaining funds, remaining expenditures, unprocessed expenditures, uh, and then uh, also I've subtracted out roof funds because this is another one where um, capital was pulled out and replaced with bond funds. And, and uh, right now there's $4.885 million there that needs to be held out specifically for the roof project. Eastern High, um, similar thing there. Um, we need to bid the cameras out and, and decide if that's something that we're going to move forward with. Uh, the cameras were not put in the original contract. We're working with the, um, the contractor and the designer architect uh, and our um, uh, attorney on some roofing issues over the cafeteria and the CTE wing uh, where um, I would just call it ponding issues on the roof. Ponding issues can avoid the warranty so we need to make sure we get the ponding issues. This is where water sits on the roof and can't get to roof drains. Um, but we've met out there and we feel like we're making progress with that. And the contractor and the, and the uh, designer know they have to stand behind that. The, we, in the end, when we close out this project, we are closing documents. One of the documents would be uh, the roof warranty, but we only want to make sure we get there if, if the roof, roof is suitable um, to, to meet uh, yeah. the, the warranty description. 
So here the, uh, the math is similar. Uh, there's a lot more money left in this project. After the remaining expenditures and unprocessed ex expenditures, uh, $1.1 million there. Western High, uh, a similar issue with the roof there, uh, and we're working on that. Uh, we need to bid, uh, bid out the cameras and key cards at that site. Those were not part of the original contract. Um, and, but we did go ahead uh, with uh, putting a key card entry system on the security doors at the back of the campus because the student parking lot has security doors. Uh, and unless you have a person supervising and stand at those doors all day, day kids can't get in the door. So uh, that, that last item is in process. So we have uh, 398,000 remaining there. Williams High School, um, the tab study is done. So we're really there just waiting on the closing documents and all the warranty information at Williams High School. Um, we uh, need to bid out the cameras. Uh, you know, all of the high schools, they have cameras, but now they're 11, 11 year old cameras and lots of them don't work. Um, so the remaining funds there, uh, $91,000. Cummings High School, the cameras were part of that contract. Um, we've um, ordered this furniture for the band and chorus room, so that's taken care of. They're still working on an intercom system there. It was part of the bond as a full replacement. Uh, the band chorus store, uh, storage shelving, that's already been ordered. Um, so the one item that we do need there that we don't have would be HVAC controls for, um, for the gym wing there. Uh, we're unable to control it remotely like we are the rest of the school and monitor it the way we need to do. Uh, but it does run. Uh, so, I yes. need to ask you a question. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm, I'm going to. About Cummins, um, I got a call about Cummins' this, um, alleged baseball field that they're going to have a baseball team for the first time in five years. That says a lot. This county, this community went crazy over getting them to that parade, that band. It was amazing how Alamance County come together for these kids, and we should. There's been other situations where the counties really rallied behind the Grams or the Cummings or whoever else because we all know the definition of a healthy school is healthy parent involvement, PTO, whatever that looks like. And when I went to Cummins, me and my nosy self, um, the infield of the baseball team is mostly grass. And I was told that the, the sprinkler system has been broke for years be, just because. It's just that across the system. It's, I'm not picking on anybody. And um, I'd asked about how much that would cost, and of course it's always a lot of money. But, you know, bleachers, something like bleachers. We found two things to go into the dugouts for the kids to actually sit on. Um, and I think they can roll their aluminum bleachers around the corner to have that for the fans, the moms and dads, which I hope these bleachers are full. But um, I, I ask about stuff like that because um, I look at other schools and the parent involvement, it shows. And, and I, we, we got to do something about this because I think those boys that are going to try out for that baseball team deserve an infield that you don't mow because you can't play on grass and it's going to take a lot. There ain't enough roundup in Elements County to kill all that grass. And as we're talking <laughs> landscapers, that's going to have to take care of this field. And I think they deserve it. And I, I'm not fussing at anybody, just the fact that it's happened. I, I do not understand how we have all this with this, and I know we do because of the roofs. But it's back to the things about what the kids are involved with. A kid on a field is not a kid in a street. And it is so important that we think about that because I think they all deserve their chance to put that uniform on and feel awesome about themselves. The NFL ain't parked outside of no high school. I ain't seen that lately. But it could. And I, dadgummit, we got a, what, is, what does he do? He runs, what's it called? He's a running back at Cummins. He's going to state. See, I don't even know what he does. I just know he's fast. <laughs> and he just catches everything and runs really fast. And Southern's got them. They all got them. But I think they all deserve to have that, that really solid field to play on. And, um, I mean, I, we cannot show the difference in the schools when it comes to their equipment, their buildings, and that kind of stuff. Um, I, I, I just had to say it. I mean, I went over there. I got pictures because I take pictures. And um, I just, you know, the coach was there. I met him, uh, Coach Krim, the, their football coach. You know, their principal, I love him. He's wonderful. He is the guy for that school. I have no doubt, Mr. Thomas and, and Mr. Reed, all of them. They're doing everything they can, but we've got to make sure something as simple as dirt and an infield of a baseball field 
is to me is a crisis and we got to do better or we gonna let us play at the new Fairchild Stadium up there with all that stuff I could do that I mean I could do that I would not mind being in our home field but I, I don't mean to sound silly but things like that are important they're important to kids because when a kid sees that that tells them exactly how much they matter it really does because that community's got to support them because that's that's why they get up and go to school sometimes just for athletics and we got to make sure it all comes together for them. So I'm sorry, I get off my box. I'm sorry. It's been box day. I'm really sorry. So uh, Ms. Thompson, we're currently assessing our our, need, our needs there at the okay. athletic facility. I haven't sent you a Dear John letter, I promise. <laughs> okay. I might make a, 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 an add a comment to your comment there, Pam. One of the things about involvement in extracurricular activities is that is one of the things that keeps kids in school. Yes. They might otherwise not stay there. Yeah. But with those extracurricular activities, they get involved. They want to stay involved in continuing their access to that team, learning more about the whatever the, the sport is or activity is that they're involved in. Those are all things that are important, and we need to have those available as well. I was watching the Eagles and the cheat. No, no. <laughs> oh my gosh, the Eagles got beaten. Everybody lost yesterday. But anyway, they were talking about the people and then say so and so, what college they come from. And there were four or five guys that listed their high school. Now tell me, he ain't awesome. And that was a big support system for this. This like 565, seven foot tall linebacker. I don't know my names, but I just know they're big and fast. That's all that matters. So. <laughs> I'll never be on ESPN, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so it, continue. Yes, sir. It, it, Sorry, it, John. At I didn't Cummings, we have, uh, at Cummings, uh, um, it looks like we'll end up with $1.2 million left there. Um, southeast <clears throat> um, looks a little bit different. Uh, the, the cameras and key cards, uh, that installation is in progress now. Um, we already have a contract in place for that. Uh, they're completing the auditorium sound system. Um, at the time I completed this uh, presentation, we thought we'd be done in November, but it looks like that's still ongoing now, but that's part of the original contract. Some of the equipment still back ordered for that. Uh, still uh, need to uh, make sure we finalize setting up the CTE equipment in the carpentry lab, but that's in process now. Um, the cold water, uh, cold weather tab study has been done, um, and then uh, at the time I prepared this, we had about 332,000 left in the 1.5 of unused funds that you allowed us to move from Western High School to Southeast High School for the purpose of stocking the school. Uh, but uh, even as I was preparing this, they still had things that, that were, they were ordering uh, for the school. So uh, I, did, I don't anticipate any of that 332,000 being, being left there. So the remaining funds at Southeast uh, you can see that we have uh, $4.7 million in bond funds. Uh, the remaining expenses there, we, we still haven't gotten our final pay application from SAMIT. Along with that pay app, we'd receive all the closing documents, all the warranty information, and so on. And that also remaining uh, expenditures includes the final pay apps for the cameras and key card system and a few other things. Um, so we had, at the time I prepared this, $418,000. Uh, in unprocessed expenses, and that would, those were things that had been processed in my office but had not yet made it over here to, to be recorded on the budget. Um, and then on here, I've also listed road widening payback. Uh, so uh, county commissioners had given funds, capital reserve funds for the road widening uh, at this school, um, and I've already submitted the uh, application to DOT for the reimbursement. Um, but um, we'll have to give back seventy-four thousand uh, dollars in capital funds because the wi road widening was under by that amount. Can you say that again? I didn't follow that. From the top or just the road widening? <laughs> no, just, uh, <laughs> just, um, just whatever got you to seventy-four thousand um, dollars. So um, I submit. I, I, I had mentioned to you all before that. Um, about three years ago when the county commissioners gave the money uh, for the road widening at this school and at Southern um, and in here for the CTE building as well, uh, the Board of Education mixed the money into the contract so they didn't have road widening separated out by SAMIT, who, who was handling all that at the school sites. So uh, what we had to do was go back and have SAMIT pull out all the cost figures associated with the road widening. And that's what I submitted to DOT for reimbursement. 
And so the amount that I submitted for road widening reimbursement was $74,526,000 less than the amount that the county commissioners contributed for the road widening. So we need to hold that amount out and then and push it back to capital reserves at the end of the project because it was not bond money. Any update on when we might know if we're going to get that reimbursement? Uh, I just talked to uh, Mr. Chuck Edwards uh, via email last week, and, and he has all these things submitted to the state. So for, for Southern, uh, Southern High, it was the road widening and the bus lot. Uh, and then here at Southeast, right now he only has the road widening uh, part because there, and, and the bus lot part. The CTE part was part of the ongoing project and that's still ongoing. Is that? Okay. So at this site, we think we'll have $1.9 million left. So that's uh, each of the, the bond sites. Uh, I had given you a summary sheet, uh, Mr. Walker, if you want to put that uh, sheet back up that just lists the dollars. Um, and I could just speak to you about what that one. Um, so on this, this sheet that he has up here, um, you should have a paper copy that uh, Mr. Walker had passed out to you as well. Um, you have that one? I don't see it. Didn't give that one? Okay, I have it here. So on, on this sheet, I just summarize uh, the prior sheets that I've shown you. Um, so at the top of this, I list each of the bond sites and where it says remaining funds, those dollar figures are the exact figures that I showed you on each of the slides that I just showed you. This, the middle column, uh, this listed additional required expenses. Those are the items that I pointed out to you as I went through the slides. Uh, and then the, the math in the far right column uh, just lists the amount that would need to be held out for each of those projects. Uh, and so then at the bottom or in the middle part where I list the total remaining funds, that would be the total remaining funds, $5.9 million, uh, if we only did what was required to, uh, uh, to get these projects complete. At the bottom, what I've listed are the other things that I had listed on these slides as uh, things that were implied from the outset of the, the bond project, the security projects like Ms. Thompson mentioned, the security walls, the cameras, and that sort of thing. So you can see for Pleasant Grove, I've listed the windows that I showed you. Uh, South Mebane, I listed a, a budget price for the roof section. Uh, and then at Graham, uh, cameras and key cards and the rear driveway. Uh, Southern High, I listed the cameras and key cards and the security walls, Eastern, Western, and uh, Williams, cameras and key cards. And then at Cummings, the uh, HVAC controls for the gym. So that total comes to uh, $4.1 million. And if you got, got all those things, then it would leave roughly 1.8. So I thought this sheet really is more or less like a menu of opportunities. Okay, Ms. Thompson, do you have questions? Is this the part where we're gonna decide about this? This is the part? This is the part where we ask any remaining questions before we make a motion. Okay. Um, Motion on, I'm confused, Mr. Chairman. Oh, just questions on, on what he's presented so far? That's, that's my okay. approach. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, we've heard them before, thank goodness, a couple weeks ago, and we're hearing them again right now, and it looks like we've got a decision on decide to fund this. And um, there's a way to fund this without touching the fund balance and that's to use this amount out of the $10 million we'd set aside for the courthouse that's way off in the future because of the debt of that. So um, 
I am planting that seed for us to use this, tent, whatever that amount is, eight point whatever, um, to come out of that $10 million that we had pushed to the side in capital things for the possibility of a courthouse in the future. Uh, it doesn't touch the fund balance, but we are a county of integrity. We pay our bills. If this was the opposite and we were standing in front of them, it would be the same thing. We cannot ever not pay our bills, regardless of the situation. And I can remember when we instated this 3.2 pay-go stuff, it changed a lot for the school system. Mr. Thompson, hey, I don't mean to interrupt you, but this is a, your opportunity to ask questions for Mr. I'm Hull. asking questions. I'm, I'm asking questions. I, you know what? It's not our argument I about know. our position. I know. It's never my position, is it? This happens every time. And I'm just going to just say what I just stated to plant a seed, and then we can go from there, and the rest of you guys can talk. That's what we'll do. Mr. Turner, do you have questions for Mr. Hook or other school board officials? Um, I have a question related simply to, to, to this. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, um, the, the bond projects. There's a term in the national security world called mission creep, where you, you've got something you're... you're, you're planning to do and the longer you stay the more things change mm -hmm. and the more you you go into different areas I'm concerned that we've got some project creep here um, I, I've asked a number of times from from this seat that we we need to to close out the bond projects from their initial contracted scope. So the initial contracts that we had to do the things that we contracted to do, we need to close those out. When we first allocated money for the bond projects years and years ago, th there were some things identified that we wanted to do at each school. There have been new things that we've identified that we want to do at each school. I I'm not discrediting the, the validity of doing any of those things. Um, but I think we, we've got, we owe it to the residents of Alamance County to close out the original scope of the bond projects, to know what's left over from each of those schools, and to say, we, we've done the initial scopes. And, and I'm concerned that I'm not being heard on that, and so it creates some frustration. Again, I'm not discrediting <coughs> any of these projects that remain that we want to do, but I think we need to, to look at those as part of a broader process on what our priorities are going forward, and I think closing out the projects based on the initial scopes needs to be a priority. Thank you. Oh, and I guess so the question is, when, when do you think we can, we can be in a position to just close out the, the, bump, the, the um, punch list items that we need to do for the original scopes? How long do you think that'll take? Um, if we look at the top of this sheet, uh, the items that I've listed there in the center would be the ones that would be required to get to, to where you want to be exclusive of the punch list. <coughs> We've been uh, uh, continually walking these campuses, like Eastern and Western, uh, for the punch list. That's ongoing now. Um, it's it's tough to chase down these these contractors and their subs to get it done. We're very close. Um, at one time, I, I thought we'd be done at Christmas, uh, but it, it looks like that's you know, going to go on. We met at Eastern uh, several weeks ago about some some items that need to be done there. Uh, and then we, we go back uh, on a daily basis and, it, and it's not done. And so, the, and the other two items we have there are the, the roof issues that are gonna stretch Eastern and Western out some, the, the two that I had mentioned. But um, in a nutshell, the, the money that would need to be spent, uh, I have it listed here. We've got to get those things done. The electrical panel, we're right back to supply chain, which we thought we'd never hear that again. But in the electrical world with switch gears and panels, it's, it still exists. So the re-engineering of the panel and the ordering of the panel would cause that grand one to be stretched out. I feel confident in the numbers that I've shown you. So uh, as far as how much money's left in each project, I think this is very, very accurate. Um, we've been holding. Um, you called it creep. We're holding on that because I think that's a joint decision between the boards. Do we spend that money that I've listed on the projects on the bottom or not spend that money? I'm just showing the work that needs to be done or could be done 
I'm not taking a position on that other than to provide you all with information. Thank you. Mr. Lashley, do you have questions? Nope. Um, once again, Mr. Turner stepped on me. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'll you, believe well. Now, you asked the same question yeah. that I wanted to ask, uh, and I do appreciate that. Thank you for looking forward. Uh, it's very, very important. We're, we're already have passed five years from this bond being voted by the citizens of Alamance County. Your organization likes to compare yourself to Orange County. Well, let's do that. Orange County passed a $120 million bond in 2016. After it was voted on and passed, they provided information to the voters about what was going to happen. Took them three years and a half. On July 1st, three and a half years later, they're completed, they're done, and they're working on the phase two. My question is, why aren't we in that situation? Why is it five years after our voters voted for this, we still have nothing to show them for it, unless, of course, you want to choose the, the school that was built? That's the only thing that I can see. And I have folks in the audience who want me to ask this question today. When can you complete the projects that the voters passed five years ago? That is extremely important, and, and I would think it would be a high priority. So all of, all of the schools, we have a certificate of occupancy, and we're utilizing all the spaces um, that were added to the schools or renovated through the projects. Uh, we're just waiting on closing documents in some cases and a few final things that I've illustrated here or in uh, in the presentation, but we're, we're very close. Do you foresee you being completed with the bond projects before the next budget? I, I really can't say, uh, based on what I shared with uh, you all and, and pointed out to Mr. Turner, two of the schools we have roofing issues. We wouldn't want to close those two projects out with the roofing issues, uh, but I, I don't think that uh, I, think, I, I don't think we'll be without the figures you need for the budget process, and I think these figures uh, get us very close to that. So when I just want to clarify, like when I look at the remaining expenditures that I've listed on each of these um, slides, I'm looking at the pay applications. I can see exactly what we've paid them, what the contract price is, and exactly how much we owe them. And that would go for the contractor for the school site, but also any other contracts that we have out there at that site. So there won't be any creep in the dollar figures uh, that I've shown you here today. But as far as pushing or driving the contractors and the subs to, to get on with it, um, it's not as easy as it sounds. Do you owe these contractors money? No. That's maybe why they're not showing up. If you owe them money and Oh, they say, I'm sorry. We, yeah, we have some, we're holding some pay apps. I, I misinterpreted your question. Definitely. We're holding that. the pay apps on the two sites uh, where we're having roofing issues. Um, but the other contractors are really not billing us uh, for work that they're not doing. So, no, we're not, uh, we're not holding money that would cause them to put them under any kind of due rest that they think they're not going to get paid. Well, uh, every contractor I ever talked to just loves doing work for the school system and the county because they do know they're always going to get paid. They don't have to wait 45, 90 days like, like most companies make them do. So my only suggestion to you is to really double your, redouble your efforts and get these bond projects completed so you can actually show Alamance County taxpayers that they are getting something for all the extra money they're having to pay in taxes for your organization. Yes, sir. So just make sure that we redouble our efforts. And, and I would say for the next, uh, and, and I think the county commissioner should be once a month, we really need you to come in here and give us an update. If nothing's changed in the past 30 days since you talked to us, you can say that and, and skip the meeting. But at some point in time, we really got to push to get these things completed. Taxpayers are looking, why has it been five years since it's voted on and nothing's completed except our high school? That's a logical, rational question. That's not a gotcha question. It's a logical, rational question. Yes, sir. I agree with you. Thank you. Mr. Carter. Am I correct in the these remaining pri priorities? These were items that were in the bond, correctly? Well, correct? yes we and no. Security I think walls, when, security cameras. When they um, did, did the promotional materials for the bond, I think they just generally uh, listed these kind of items for all of the bond sites.
Right. Uh, and so they were not put into the contract with the contractor. So these these are there are no contracts for these things at the sites at the bottom of the sheet that exist. I think these were items that were held out uh, to see if there were going to be enough funds. And then for the cameras uh, specifically and key cards, the system's spec specification, the type of server and the type of cameras and all, at the time that the contracts were put into place had not been developed yet. But you can see from the numbers in lots of sites, there is no funds, uh, there are no funds at the specific sites for the things that are listed there at the bottom. Uh, so then that would get back to both boards to decide, is that part of the bond or not part of the bond at this point? Well, have we had a problem getting materials for these pro projects? The ones like at the key bottom? Card, key cards and cameras, I mean. No, these these were just not uh, not part, part of the projects uh, from the outset. So, for example, at uh, uh, Eastern High, cameras and key card, that it was part of the promotional uh, pr promotional materials that we would do security upgrades, security walls, cameras and key cards there, but it was not part of the, the, the uh, contract that was put in with the contractor, the building contractor, uh, two, two and a half years ago. And so now it's still here, it's not done, and I haven't entered into contracts because I didn't know how much money would be left in these individual bond sites. And, you know, we're trying to make sure we don't spend money in the bond sites unless we know what's there in the clear once the bond project is, is finished. Well, I'm the only board member who was here when the bonds were approved. Um, but I was under the impression, and I think our board at that time was under the impression that these security issues, in particular key cards and cameras, were critical to trying to bring our schools into into as secure a position as possible. So I'm kind of curious as to why they wouldn't have been included in the contracts. Well, that's why I listed them here for you because I think they are viewed as critical uh, by, by the uh, community uh, and they were in the original bond uh, marketing materials. Um, but uh, I think there are multiple reason they was, reasons they were not put in the original contracts. Number one being uh, the system at, at, at the time had not developed its specification for the kind of server, cameras, and key cards that it wanted to use. And then number two, they could have done a change order at some point to add it, but I think not knowing how much money was going to be there, uh, just imagine if they had done a change order and put it into Southern High Schools where you only have maybe $161,000 left, you would have been in arrears on that bond site. So um, I think it was when, when the decision was made to hold these out to the end was probably the best decision to be made. And now it goes back to the boards to decide, uh, are these security issues prominent now? Or what what do you do with them? How do we go forward? Well, you know, one of my one of my platform issues in 2018 was an SRO in every school. Part of my platform was security for our schools. And so, as I said, I think this board, or the people that were on this board at that time, were under the understanding that we were going to have these security issues taken care of with the construction. And I'm a little concerned that we're sitting here today realizing that I knew they were still hadn't hadn't been completed. I didn't even I didn't know they weren't in the original contracts. That's a that's a concern. Well, I'm glad to take you, you, you the direction of uh, the Board of Commissioners if you want me to move forward with those, but then it would go uh, uh, contrary to what Mr. Turner is requesting about closing out closing out the existing bond contracts. And if I may, Mr. Chairman, I don't think those are mutually exclusive. I mean, I think, right. you, I think you can identify, if we want to, these as a new project, and you can close out the existing projects when they're, you know, when you can, and still move forward based on, uh, this is a really, really helpful slide. Um, we can because it allows us to choose to evaluate these things on their merits each 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 of them um, so I don't think those are mutually exclusive I don't okay I don't either I just I definitely want to see this get done okay now my shot <laughs> we keep coming up short my first question to you is, who with ABSS designs 
and approves your con the approval would be your school board approves your contracts. But who's writing those contracts up without any caps with many vendors? You know, here's just the open checkbook, and we want you to do the following. Who's designing those contracts? I, I, I don't quite understand what contracts you're... Well, the motor uh, remediation, for example, and you sign contracts with Ben Bass's group that have no caps whatsoever, and when they got through, they just started handing you invoices. I've never, out of 50 years of practicing law, advised any client on either side of the issue to sign an uncapped contract. And that's what apparently you guys did, and I don't mean you individually, but was approved. How do you enter, a, if I'm gonna buy a car, do you just go in and say, here's my checkbook? Give me whatever you want, and you set the price. You don't do that. So just to clarify, you set you're not the contracts with no caps on them. So just to clarify, you're not speaking of any of the camera contracts or the not the, the, the things I'm, I'm suggesting. Well, here. I don't know about that, mm -hmm. but I know with the motor remediation, you signed contracts were totally uncapped. By uncapped, there was no. You had a, a what the contractor called a ROM. That's a estimate, but you had no cap on the monies that they were going to charge you. How in the world do you do that? I, I'm going to de defer. Thanks, sir. Good morning. Is it still morning? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> no, so you have uh, seven and a half minutes. Yeah. So <laughs> Again, as Mr. Hook said, this is this this if you want to call it a contract with builder services was an emergency. It was a crisis, and like Ben Bass used an example, uh, if you were going into surgery, you don't ask how much it's going to cost. I don't. If you want your life saved, so we were at their mercy. There was no other contractor out there that could do the job that they did in the time that they did it. So that's why we're here today to finish what we started and try to pay builder services for the remaining amount because I think they did an outstanding job in the timeline. You there. Sasser did try to give you contracts. They did not have the manpower to do what builder services did. They did not. Now, we did use builder services, I'm sorry, Sasser for some other jobs. We were trying to use local services, and but Sasser could not have pulled that off. Yeah, I saw those contracts. They yeah. were all capped. Right, but they, they were not over, doing the job they, they that, that we asked them. builder services to do. They had isolated schools, and I'll remind you that Sasser took twice as much time on Newlin and Andrews than Builder Services on all the other schools. Well, so they had you ready for day one of opening the schools. They had a lot more time to get us there too. So I'm not trying to downgrade Sasser. I'm very appreciative of what they did for us. But to ask the question, why didn't we have a cap? That was the only business that came to us that says we can do all of these schools and get you back in school sooner than later. And they did that. Did they meet the ROM or estimate that they gave you? Some yes, some no. But when you have toxigenic mold, uh, water intrusion, that when you peel back the wall and you find things that you didn't expect to find, that's kind of like the surgery, right? There's things that they didn't expect and we didn't expect. But I don't think you want to fix things halfway. That's I, not integrity, I right? Agree so that's that. why we're here and that's why the number is higher. I did negotiate with Builder Services. They did reduce the price of rentals on the dehumidifiers. I think they probably reduced a lot more than, than that and along the way. I don't think federally that he can really put that in writing. So I, I'm just at a loss to know what else to say to you guys that in fact that we just don't have the money and our buildings are pretty clean and we want to keep them that way. And I think we will moving forward. Lots of things that you're concerned about, I'm concerned about too, Mr. Paisley, but they happen they, they, they were before my tenure. And I know you hate hearing that, and I hate saying it, but that's the truth and that's the reality. We've got to move forward. As I said Thursday, I want to strengthen our relationship. And I've done nothing but be transparent with you guys in terms of my frustration. I don't think I, Mr. Lashley and I agree on the percentages of funding, but our numbers are coming from DPI, apples to apples. I respect your Let's opinion. Talk about it. I respect. I don't. I don't have time to Let's, argue today. I just want to ask you the question: Can we move forward and fully fund ABSS and also pay builder services what we owe them? Because that's the right thing to do. Well, and you, you used our money to do so, right? 
when you reported 19%, mm -hmm. as several of the speakers talked about. Where'd that come from? DPI's website. 19%. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Actually, the, uh, there's another number out there at 17.6, but we took the high road and used the higher number. You left out all of the grant we were, were comparing apples to apples of, with other counties. Off. Orange County would have the similar conversations with their board, too. I'm talking about apples to apples. We're less funded than our neighbors. Apples to apples. I'm not here to argue about that. I'm here to simply ask you to consider finding the funds for the extra the $5 million to pay builder services and consider the $3.3 million we need to survive this year, this year with our capital. Well, on Thursday, when you had your mm -hmm. press release, sure press conference, right. Uh, you represented 19%. Correct. When in fact it's 32%. Because you got all the bonds. I respectfully disagree. This is your meeting, prove so it. go ahead. Prove it. You disagree. You, can you prove it that yes, you, I'm wrong? We go can. ahead. Let's talk. Let's okay, talk. let's talk. Let's talk. You got right. your numbers? I don't. I just know what Apparently, I have. I know you don't. Yeah. You never I have 19 percent is, is what DPI has said that we let's talk get from about you guys. These numbers, sir. I, I totally. I'm Again, so glad. we're not. We're going back in history here. No, we're not. We need to move forward as a team you and figure out how to, we're uh, going to do this. Can you please? Help us today and decide whether you vote or not vote. I need to know, are we going to make progress here and get builder services paid off and move forward with mm -hmm. what we're doing that's on this screen? Because to me, that's what matters. We have a lots of safety items up there. You guys have preached to me, let's keep our schools safe. All the things that are up there that are the $5.9 million, it sounds like to me you may be considering using that money to pay builder services. That's fine. That's your choice. Let's do it. Let's move on. But if you do that, we're going to go. We're going to set way back on moving forward with safety in our schools. But we have to be honest with each other. And when you give numbers like nineteen percent, I contest that I have been honest. Thirty-two. I, I do not know. That it's been thirty-two percent. Nineteen percent. Okay. There she is right there. Okay. Yep. Susan Evans. Yep. I have people here too, Mr. Susan Lashley. Evans. We can go back and forth. This is not and useful. I told it's not you useful. Your school, I know it's not useful because we're shining light on something that you don't like. No, it, we're not stop making progress. Is, sir, we're pointing Susan fingers. Susan Evans is right there. Mm -hmm. I actually told you and your school board what the rule of thumb was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't exact, mm -hmm. but I gave you a rule of thumb. You dismissed it. You actually say that it's not true. You went to DPI. Why wouldn't you talk to our lady here? Miss McVeigh has talked to Miss Evans. Then why does Miss McVeigh look at you and say, I talked to Miss Evans and she gave me a different number? Because this board is not hearing what we need. Well, you're not hearing what we you're need. You're not being honest. I feel, feel like I am. I feel like the Let's, numbers we have. Okay, sir, you are a PhD. So No, it's an EDD, not a PhD. Whatever. Okay. I can't prescribe any medicine. We Put can't talk about numbers. You are the head of this organization, and you can't talk to me the, about the numbers the that, data like that I about today. The data I'm because sharing with you is from the, the Department of Public Instruction who services us. That's Every school district has a number beside their name, beside their LEA. Ours on that page was 19%. And you didn't question it. You didn't talk to think that, you know, I'm going to call Miss Evans, mm -hmm. or I'm going to get Miss McVeigh to call Miss Evans and see exactly what the county tells us the number is. Where would you like to go with this, Mr. Lashley? Well, sir, I'd much rather like to talk about, uh, you say you weren't here during this time when this happened. Well, let's go back five years. But I wasn't here. I wasn't here either. Okay. But let's go back five years and let's let's take a look at it. Okay. And see what the... Uh, what the school, your public school system, the amount of money that they got from all the sources. That's all we've been asking for. I asked, I asked you, sir, on mm -hmm. June 19th, a question. I provided I, you quite a bit of information. You didn't provide right? me squat, sir. Wow. You actually told me something that I didn't ask for, and you gave me dates I didn't even want. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for providing information. For the that record could, here, I could, could you not specifically use. say what you want at this not point? Use. I even spoke to you. So it's on the recording. So you at, tell me what you want, and we will get it to you. I tell you ASAP. what, sir. I don't have time. To oh, do okay. That for you, but I'm over. I'm going to uh, just put it in writing. You June 19th to your own okay. comments. You can look at your own comments. Okay, what gotcha. you said. I asked you a particular question. You told me you'd give me an answer. Here it is, December 4th. Don't have an answer, but that's okay because I got the answers myself. Okay. I know how to get information without people willingly. Serve it up to me. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to serve it up to me, I will find it my own way. And I did. Can I ask again, can we move forward with a productive conversation here about how we can pay off builder services Perfect. and move on with business? That's all I want today. 
If it's the answer is you're not going to pay it, then just tell us so we can get back to work. I'm just one person, sir. Yeah, I know your answer. I know that. You don't know my answer. Well, I think Stop. I do. Stop! This is ridiculous. This is a pissing match, and I'm sick of it. I have made it clear, Ms. Thompson. I'm y'all. here. I'm Stop. here to get an answer. Saying. That's I'm what not. I want. Okay. Not to go back in time, but what can we do today okay. to get builder services hold on, paid off? Hold on, this, this emotions are high. I will advocate for the 22,000 kids in Alamance Burlington Schools. Hold on, hold Every day. On. Hold on, Dr. Butler, I know. We, we need to decide what we're going to do because this can go back and forth, back and forth. It's like keeping school. And, and you got people involved that need to know where they're going in a direction, children and teachers. Um, and, and the adults can't screw this up. So um, I, I said a while ago about a motion, about taking this, whatever they need to fund them, out of this $10 million. I talked with Heidi over the weekend. It is, it is allowed to get this going. And from then on out, we all act like adults and hold each other accountable. And I think it's very important. There, there is, this is personal, and personal does not get you anywhere. I, I watch it nationally. I watch it the state. I watch it right here. And it's not moving forward. Everybody's got their own opinion. I respect that because that's what you're supposed to do. Everybody's supposed to have differences to pull together to make something really successful. And this has been going on for years. I've been on both sides of the fence of this. And we've got to stop it. We've either got to do the right thing or just whatever you want to call it. But um, I, I've sit there and suggested something. And I have to ask, do you really want to get a solution or do you just want to keep arguing? Because this is like, this is like the people who have recliners in their Sunday school, and they ain't giving them up because they've been there for fifty years. <laughs> it's tradition, and this we are better. Miss Thompson, this. that's all I'm asking for today. I'm gonna have okay. ABSS hold on, hold on is now. an answer. I know, but we cannot come in here when you walk in, all of us on the defense. That's what you're going to get back, and we are the example of our county, and we have got to show what kind of leaders we really are. When you get elected, you got to be willing to lose to do the right thing, you know, and that's what I got to look at. And I just, I'm pleading with everybody to get out of the way and think about your kids that walk in these schools, something as silly as a ball field, and, and the teachers. My daughter's the teacher. The toll it took on her, it took on all of them. But if we aren't real leaders and we don't really show what we're made of, nobody's want to come, come here and work in our school system. And I'm that's telling you. And I'm telling you all, none of us would be sitting here if we didn't have a teacher. That's right. You know? So let's just take a step back and work this out and really be proud of our county that we have worked this out because things happen. It hits the fan. And I just, I just want to see us get past this and start on a new foot. We're starting January. And I want my county to be the county that everybody wants to be like. Amen. You know? Yes. So let's just, let's just do this. Let's do this the right way. To that end, I'm going to make a motion that we pay $5,234,458.96 from the previously committed ABSS capital reserve funds to be reimbursed by unspent bond funds and that we do not refund again, repay additional PAYGO funds. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion as to this motion? Uh, I have some questions, Mr. Chairman. I think, um, Dr. Butler, would you mind, I can't see the county manager. Could you, would you mind sure. moving the podium back? Well, thank you. <clears throat> Take the hallway if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see her now? <laughs> that's the best thing that's been said today. <laughs> uh, County staff's provided some options. Could you, would you mind just covering sure. them? So we gave some options just to get you thinking about what what you know what options are out there. There's more than these three. The three options that I laid out in terms of getting us moving forward. Option one was using just uh, what the motion was made uh, by Chair Paisley using capital reserve funds and then using the bond proceeds to reimburse those. So that would cover the cost of, reme of the mold remediation at 5.2 million. The second option we um, fleshed out for you was kind of splitting that using 2.6 million out of county fund balance 
using uh, the remaining balance to get to the 5.2 from the ABSS capital reserve funds, again, to be replenished with the unspent bond proceeds. So it's a swap there because bond proceeds cannot be used for mold remediation. You have to use the capital reserve funds and then you'd reimburse. So it's not a loss of funding to, um, to ABSS, it's a change of use of those funds, if that's clear. On the PAYGO for option two, you could appropriate $3.3 million from county fund balance if you wanted to help uh, replenish that PAYGO fund. And then you could, um, at the end of the fiscal year, if possible, then you could reimburse the fund balance appropriation from your sales tax allocation to try to help uh, offset that. Option three that we looked at was to appropriate the full cost of the mold remediation from county fund balance, 5.2 million. And then again, multiple options, but the PAYGO we looked at was to um, allow ABSS to use some unspent bond proceeds to uh, help offset additional needs for the PAYGO. Um, the option that Commissioner Thompson um, has reflected was the 10 million of uh, revenue re Revenue okay, reserves, re revenue replacement, sorry. The uh, ARP funding that we had that is uh, unrestricted for use. We had talked about using that for courthouse or divergence center, but has not been appropriated at this point. Is that in our fund balance now? That's a part of our fund balance. It's a it's, separate, oh, it's in a separate oh. fund, commissioners. It is Big not, pardon? It's in a separate fund. It is not part of our general fund. Right. It's part of our money. Right. Yep. Oh. And my uh, motion is option one, is that correct? Correct. So just to, to kind of help clarify again, the $5.2 million needed for mold remediation would have to be paid out of the ABSS capital reserve, and then you would reimburse the remaining bond proceeds back to the capital reserve because you can't use the bond proceeds for the mold remediation costs. And that provides about 700000 over that amount of the payment to uh, I think we were, the service. motion was just to cover the mold remediation. Just, to, just, to cover, just the $5.2 million, so that would leave about 700000 in the unspent bond funds then. Uh, that's correct, yes. <clears throat> a couple other questions, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I'm going to go back and forth between Ms. York and Dr. Butler. Um, the the 5.2 million dollars for unspent I mean for uh, for mold remediation that remains, that remains obligated is there is there any argument that 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 amount is not owed no we, we owe them that money okay. does the school system have that money no so if we don't authorize any money to pay that obligation what would happen whatever a business does when they don't get paid Absolutely. Sure. Ms. York, um, if we were to take the $5.2 million out of fund balance, yeah. um, well, let me back up. What, what is the goal? What 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 is the county's policy regarding cushion the fund balance cushion? The board has adopted a policy that set a target of 20% of your expenditures to to have a fund balance at 20% to cover that. Why? What is the what is the rationale behind that? We're instructed by the local government commission to keep an appropriate size of fund balance to cover approximately three months of expenditures. The twenty percent is a target that we set to help take care of you know unplanned needs that might arise. And we've been trying recently to up that up to twenty five percent. There's been some conversation about raising that target, but to date the policy stands at twenty percent. Why would we raise it to twenty five percent? It would be a way to strengthen our financial position, helps uh, our rating agents um, value us and give us a higher bond rating, potentially. And if we were to fund a $5.2 million out of fund balance, where would our fund balance cushion be in terms of 20% or 25%? It would be at the 20% if you uh, were to allocate $5.2 million. Okay. And um, 25%. Just, just to answer your question, 25% is one-fourth of our budget, which is basically three months reserved. Okay. 
So that the twenty percent continues to increase as our expenditures increase. Perfect. All right. Dr. Butler, um, with respect to the as a portion of the three point three in Pago, there's the one point two million that has been identified as being encumbered. Obligated, correct. Um, is that money spent or is it obligated contractually? It's spent. My finance officer says it's spent. Um, and that gets back to, it, was it was it spent when we allocated money from the 3.3 in Pago to cover? To mold? If you're talking about the original 1.247 million that we had Correct. spent, those were pieces <coughs> of contracts that were put in place starting July 1 uh, for Mr. Hook's plan that we had already set aside that money out of PAYGO, out of the 3.3. And so the majority of those funds were paid for before we started the mold remediation conversations. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Follow-up to that is if, if previously you've been, you've been getting the 3.3 million monthly, which is about 275,000. Correct. You wouldn't have had the 1.2 million when it was paid. You wouldn't have had, because you would have you would have had a portion of it. So how how were you met? Talk to me through that decision. I don't quite understand. Mr. Bay can come up here. As far as having the funds in right. place, right? Because um, you wouldn't have had the paygo yet to pay those funds. Correct. But when we started the mold payment process, uh, Miss Evans and I would speak frequently. So as the bills came in for Sasser because they were the first in line, um, I notified Ms. Evans that these bills were ready for payment so that she could drop the money into our checking account so the well, funds would I mean, be there. But I mean, the 1.2 that's obligated that's not mold related. Right. Um, you wouldn't have had the pay-go money yet to obligate it. Correct. So how? So you're paying the out-of-operation funds? Yes. Okay. Is that normal? Is that your normal process? Somewhat, probably. I mean, I can't speak for what prior administration did, but but most likely, yes. So that money is out the door. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I, I'm mm -hmm. gonna think on this for a second, Mr. Chairman. I don't know if anybody has any other questions, but I I, I want to be heard again before a vote. I have a question. How much did we actually allocate from PayGo? The whole 3.3, or was it 2.2? I thought it was. I thought it was about two and a half or two point two million that we allocated from PAYGO funds for the mold remediation. For mold remediation, because some of it. So at the joint meeting, the board of commissioners made a motion for the three point three million to go. The whole three point three. Correct, but I think we found out later that one point two had already been seven had already been paid, as Ms. McVeigh has said, for some contract work. And then there was also 1.267 that was paid for mold remediation out of PAYGO for Andrews and Newland. So the 3.3 was not actually available to be used <coughs> in the manner right. in which the That's board That's what I was has. thinking, all right. Yeah. Did Ms. Thompson have any other comments? No, I'll have a heart attack if I do. Uh, uh, Dr. Butler, the, there was some commentary about the $102,000 that was in ABSS's fund balance. That was at the end of 2000. That was the end of June of this year. Right? We just had an audit that um, was, is, is it public information yet? Yes. You want to speak to what the, um, I'm sorry. It hasn't approved by the LGC yet, right. and once it is, will be placed on our website. Yeah. And the 102,000 that you're speaking of is the unassigned fund balance. Right. There's approximately 542,000 that was assigned for this year's budget. Um, I, I put that in place just as a placeholder yeah. in anticipation oh. of not having to use that. Okay. But that's, uh, that's a figure that predated the mold. I mean, that, that amount in fund balance predated mold. So there was no... Yes. There was no mold money that was that was used to, to get to get out to take out of your operations Correct. fund in order for that for the prior the, year. by the end of June. Correct for the prior and, year. And it's also true that 
that no, the money that was spent on mold remediation was, was from money that was designated for capital. So Correct. none of those monies affected your operations. I get that you spent 1.2 million out of operations in anticipation of a refund for, that, was, that would go to capital. Yes. But, but none of the monies that have been spent so far for mold remediation have affected your operations budget. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, Let me add something. Th sure. I just want to make it clear that there are crises today. You're right, what you right. just said. It's the fact that we still owe $5.2 million, I I, and, and we don't have. I get that. Okay, I just I want to clarify that. But I just wanted to be clear that, that, there's, that if we're talking about a, a financial <laughs> crisis that's related to operations budget, not, none of the mold expenditures have affected that operations. Correct. Now we, now, uh, now we can deal with the 5.2. Right. And, and here's, here's something that we're not talking about that we need to be talking about and we need to be focused on. Mm -hmm. And that is in about 45 days, we expect to have a recommendation from two different engineering firms to talk about the top 20 HVAC repairs and the top 20 roof repairs uh, in ABS, ABSS and also some information about the county. I don't know what that's going to reveal, but I expect that that's going to reveal that we need to have a pretty serious um, expenditure and a plan on what, uh, on how we cover what those expenditures are over time, based upon a systematic total review. Exactly. I think we need to be careful, and I think your board needs to be careful, that we are anticipating what could come down the road in 45 days. Uh, and we need to be able to carve out or to hold in place some monies to be able to tackle that problem. Uh, and so when I talked to Mr. Hook about um, about this um, the, the spreadsheet that he that he provided, which is which is very good and shows the you know projects that we could do, I agree these are worthy projects. But we need to have the conversation in 45 days about is it this project or is it a roof at name your school, which suddenly we realize needs attention. Um, that has to be part of our thinking as we make this decision. Understood. And I'll tell you where I am on this, and it's a combination of different options that we've talked about. Um, I would take the 5.2 million out of fund balance. I realize that's a hit, uh, but it keeps us above 20%, which is our policy, and it doesn't deplete the pay, I'm sorry, the, um, the bond monies that still are available that may need to be used for roofs and HVAC, or at least partially for HVAC. I would then take, I would then use Mr. Paisley's idea, partially for the 3.3. There is, well, if you look back at Mr. Hook's spreadsheet, there's $1.8 million that is not dedicated towards currently a, a project that I agree needs to be done. Mostly safety items. I would take that balance mm -hmm. and I would I would provide your board with the option to fund PAYGO projects up to $1.8 million. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. I would then take that money from the capital reserve funds that have been established from the AW Road Project and the EM Holt Road Project, and we would then backfill those with bond monies to get to the 1.8. So essentially, moving 1.8 to cover the AW Road and EM Holt Road Projects and using that capital reserves to make it available to your board to use at its discretion to the 1.8 that would cover the 1.247 and whatever else that was necessary. So what you get is 5.2 in additional funds and the ability to use at your discretion what you need to get through the year. That is my proposal. That's what I would vote. Uh, that's not the motion that's before us at this point. Um, my problem is, Mr. Starr is exactly right. In approximately 45 plus days, we'll have our engineer and his proposals. I think if we start giving away money like it's free, prior to even seeing that report, we're being, being very foolish. I think that the, my motion gives you the money to pay the bills. It does not give you additional 
funds to play with between now and then. 45 days is not long. Um, I don't think we would play not. with it, Mr. Paisley. I don't think that's what we would do with it. I think we would fix some things that need to be fixed. Just for clarification. <clears throat> well, let me remind the audience primarily that once we give you money, we have lost total control. And also remind you under state law that once we give you monies, and it's IES, monies, uh, at that point, um, you don't pay it back to us at the end of the year, as you have to the state of North Carolina. The law is very, very different with the treatment of state monies versus county monies. So all those coaches that you did not hire, all those teachers that you did not hire, and so forth, you keep the money. Not with the state. They get their money back. But we do not, the taxpayer, we've got to be responsible, not just to ABSS, but to the students, the parents, the taxpayers, to the entire county. Your job compared to ours is easy. Wow. You just, you just report wow. and take care of the school system. We take care wow. of the entire county. Okay. We're going down that road again. Let's go again, I'm just road. I'm just here to see if we can get some momentum here to pay builder services and have some money in PAYGO to get some projects done the rest of this year. Not to tell whose job's harder. If we give you all this money, do you have any idea how much, and we don't set the new tax rate until the approximately the end of June of this year, of next year, I'm sorry. Um, how much is the tax rate going to go up on each party that's struggling to already pay their, as Ms. Thompson pointed out, their mortgages, their tax bills, their everything else? And their property tax, right, from reevaluation? That's going to go up. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I get it. I'm not here to, to debate that. I'm simply here in my role to ask you to consider funding this so we have the ability to, to run operations the rest of the school year. Mr. Carr. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask a question. The proposal, that the, the, the um, motion that's now on the table leaves up about approximately $700,000 in unspent bond funds. Where can you be in spending monies on these projects, other remaining priorities, with $700,000 between now and our budget cycle. I'd ask Mr. Hook to come back up here to talk about that. I mean, we've seen it take an extraordinary amount of time to get these projects moved forward. Yes. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm not trying to pontificate. I just, we're talking about a lot of money and we're talking about not knowing where the money's gonna come from where it's going to be used, at what point, and how much we're going to have to spend when we find out how much all these projects ultimately might cost. <clears throat> so if we provide that $700,000 to use it over here on these unfinished projects, and I know this, you probably don't know the answer to this question, but what do you think you might be able to get done, and how long will it take you to get done? Do you... $4.1 million, can you spend all that and get all that done between now and June? Or are we talking about would 700000 make a big dent in those projects until we get to the budget and look at pay-go funds for next year and other issues for our budget cycle next year? Because we're, we're dealing with how much we're going to have to to deal with taxes for our citizens. And those are critical issues to the people that vote for both our school board and for your county commissioners. So I uh, just want to clarify the, the question you're asking. Uh, you're asking <coughs> if uh, uh, Chairman Paisley's, uh, Chairman Mr. Paisley's motion uh, was approved, right. then that, that would, would move your, the that remaining would pay what's five. Over the builder services and, and still leave $700,000 in unspent bond funds. Right. We would need that to to cover the 1.247 in PAYGO that we've already spent. So uh, as we continue through the year, we'd stay out of arrears.
Well, that, and that would still leave us 500 and some odd thousand dollars short of covering the previously uh, encumbered PAYGO, PAYGO funds. Do we have, and I've tried to look through your audit, do we have any idea, this may be a Dr. Butler question, or <coughs> Ms. McVeigh, do we have any idea why or how we went almost $2 million over your budget last year, which is what put you in the position that you didn't know about until after you'd already accepted the manager's recommended budget to come back to us and ask for another $900,000 at our budget time. Do we know where that money went, why it was more, why it was almost $2 million more than you budgeted? So last year, at the end of the year, when our audit was finished, um, with our last budget resolution, I had everything lined up and everything in place with the, the specific journal entries. Once the auditors came in and started reviewing, there were some additional adjustments that they did, which affected our local funds and our grant or fund eight funds. So if you compare the two, where you might see overages in some purpose codes, you will see underages in the other funds' purpose codes. So overall, there was about a four or five hundred thousand dollar overage, and the bulk of that was two entries that were done to um, recapture some dental insurance program cost and to book a payable that was not booked previously. So when you look at it as a whole, it was not to that detriment. <coughs> You have Why to look at both funds. Booked? I'm Why sorry. Why did they not show up to the audit? And you're talking about the audit right. that just came out this past week. Correct. Why were they not shown <clears throat> prior to the audit? Because once you get to the end of June and the last budget amendment that is approved by the board, that is what is in place. So if there are any entries that take place during the audit that affects that year, it could affect the purpose codes as you have seen in the report. But I think what Mr. Carter is asking is, where did that extra $2 million that you had not accounted for, where did it go? It was to pay for the costs that we already had in place over the years, not just in this current year. Um, we were trying to make sure we were covering all of the expenses, um, pretty much in local, it pays for the teacher supplements, our extensive substitute cost, as well as other operational needs like covering the cost of insurance, utilities, and those kinds of things. So we were making sure we were paying for our ne ne necessitated items that have been ongoing for years. I know you don't want to talk about fault, but who caused that $2 million shortage? Now, I don't mean the spending, but the financial accounting portion of that, your entries in your journals and your ledgers, and who, who failed to do that? Well, they were done, but then they were redone again. So, I mean, my name is on the bottom line. So, you know, I'm not going to put it on anybody else but me. You're honest. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have a question. Do we want to raise the question? Any other comments? All in favor of option number one, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. No. It passes three to two. Thank you. Thank you, County Commissioners. Thank you. Okay, County Attorney's Report. Nothing for me, board. Thank you. Commissioners, I have one item that I need to ask about. Could and you're we, next. Yes. <laughs> we would need a motion from the board to be able to amend the budget so that we can disperse this $5.2 million to pay for the mold remediation. So I'd also like to ask for a motion to go ahead and allow staff to amend the budget. We'll bring back a budget amendment uh, to formalize that 
but we do need that included in the motion. I'm sorry, I I'll show you my hand. Second. Can we talk about this for a second? Because um, we have more than one option. I guess what I wanted to ask Ms. Evans was, um, if we take this out of the fund balance, is that what's, I mean, is that the normal progress or procession that we should go down? Or can we do something else? Is, do we, I guess what I'm asking, do we have any more options rather than taking it out of the fund balance? We're not taking it out of fund balance, right? The motion would be to allow for the bond proceeds to go over to the capital reserve. Just, the capital reserve. Just wanted to make sure because I was, I was a little bit confused. Okay, thank, thank you for clarifying that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second, actually two seconds. All in favor of that motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. No. Oh, we have 3 2 vote again. It passes. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Uh, I'd like to move that we distribute $1,247,371.70 from fund balance to ABSS. I'll second. $1,247,371.70, which is the amount that they have spent in their pay go. All right, that's counter to the motion that not, was passed no, in that not. it said no additional pay go money. No, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't believe that's necessarily counter. I think it's we a spoke. New it's a new motion. Um, the, the different questions than before. All right. I have a point of order. Yes. Uh, Mr. Turner, five point two million dollars, and you want to take an additional one point two four seven out of the fund balance. That's that's your that's what you five point two out of ABSS's current bond proceeds. Not affecting fund balance. Okay. The 1.2 would hit fund balance. So that's, Susan, the only thing that we're going to hit the fund balance for is the 1.2. That's correct. Now, that being said, looking at their PAYGO issuance, now, they made a mistake spending that money before they had it. Just saying. I hate to point fingers at truth, but that's what it had. That was a very big mistake. But I understand the day we had on uh, August 28th, excuse me, August 29th, in which I made a suggestion that uh, I knew the school system was in dire straits for money, and I knew that we had just passed $3.3 million in PAYGO. I thought that it was a prudent thing to do, since they were hurting for cash, to so let them have that money. Did not think that day that I was going to have to be paying for it again, but that would be short-sighted on my part, because I understood that the school system has things that they wanted to do with that money and things that probably should be done. So if the 1.24, and, and that number is very, very close to the number that I thought that we could give them. Um, not getting all of it. We're gonna help them out a little bit just to, to, to mesh this 45 days, because I think the 45 day uh, situation is gonna be extremely important. And we really shouldn't get over our skis uh, spending money until we have an idea of what that looks like. So, with that being said, Mr. Turner, I will be more than happy to join you in that $1.247 million out of the fund balance because I do believe that that is a necessity for the school system. <coughs> do I think it's going to be the last request? Nope. But as for right now, I think that's the, probably the proper way to go. Comment, please, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I concur with what Mr. Turner said and what Mr. Lashley said, and will reiterate my point that at the 1.2 plus the 700,000 is almost $2 million, which, I mean, they've got 700,000. <laughs> I see Mr. Baker down there kind of going, what? <laughs> The 700000 they still have left in unspent bond proceeds, which they can use for these projects. Now, do we need to include a motion that allows us to move that 700000 into capital for them to use? Uh, I think we'll cover that. Okay. You do. 
um, Ms. Evans was saying she thinks we're covered already on the 700000 for okay. 5.2, but in Commissioner Turner's motion to appropriate for fund balance, we would also need a motion to, like the previous one, allow staff to amend the budget to make those funds available, available. to them. Okay. Then, Mr. Turner, would you amend your yeah. motion to um, allow that? the motion to state that we allocate one million two hundred forty-seven thousand dollars. I'm sorry. I'll state that again. One million two hundred forty-seven thousand three hundred seventy-one dollars seventy cents from fund balance to ABSS Capital Res ABSS Pago, and that we make a budget amendment to so indicate. And just so that staff is clear, board, what that's going to do is it's going to move the five point two million, and the the exact dollar amount from current bond proceeds to capital reserves that we will then be able to give those funds to ABSS with the, with um, invoices. And then the second motion would then appropriate from the county's general fund balance $1.2 million, and that would then go for ABS additional PAYGO capital needs. So will we then need a third motion for the 700000 I don't think we would at this time because we're meeting the 5.2 million that was requested for um, builder services, and then we're also meeting the 1.2 million request for their PAYGO capital. The 700,000 is already in their bond proceeds right. that they could use. Okay. For so we can I just wanted to make sure they the could. Draft. Okay. Yeah. So I need to second you again. If I might, I need to weigh in here real quick. So I, I didn't see this sheet that you guys were using for options until just a moment ago. So to the extent that Chair Paisley made a motion for option one, which includes an express statement that no additional funds would go to PAYGO, then I don't believe it's proper to vote for an additional monies to be spent directly to that. Now, there could be a vote on appropriation that's, that's not necessarily encumbered in exactly that way, but there's already been a vote on the issue of whether or not additional funds are going to go to PAYGO in this meeting. So if there's an additional motion made that usurps that, I think we need to reconsider the earlier vote, perhaps, as an option. Okay. But I don't think we can take another vote on that issue, and I apologize. I did not see this funding option sheet until just a moment ago. How do we go back and undo our vote? Well, I'm not sure that his motion said that. I think, I was thinking that the motion was the $5.2 million. I'm not sure we captured the PAYGO portion. Then then I can amend my motion to, to put the money into capital reserves, ABS's capital reserves. Do you want to ask I, the clerk what? I think that would motion. be appropriate. And, and again, I maybe we need to go back and try to figure out exactly what the motion was. Yeah, I didn't capture the um, no additional money. I didn't capture that. And he initially did you say she did or did? I didn't did hear that. She, she did, did not? Okay. So she did not catch, capture that. Oh, okay. Once it was well, I'll defer to the clerk and what she captured as far as the motion. I'm not going to weigh in on that. But if, if the motion was not made clearly to indicate that it was option one as delineated in this sheet, then I stand corrected. But I just want to clarify that we make sure we do it correctly. If it was made as option one to include the express notation, no additional funding for PAYGO, that we need to find a different way to do this if we desire to do that. And in fact, when I made the motion, I, I specified that is option one. You did. You did, you did say that. That's correct. So amended motion so puts it into capital reserves, not in, not pay go. That would work, yes. Okay. And I'll, so we'll, second, I'll that second it, it one more second. time. That's about four. Okay, you, We're good. Yeah. Just Guys, we keep diminishing our capital fund. We're I getting gave you very, option. very close to our 20% margin, and every time we keep spending money, we narrow that margin again. Uh, last thing, they keep coming back every month asking for more and more and more. And I would guess in 45 days or before, they'll be asking, where are you going to get that money? And we cannot go up on the tax rate. We shouldn't go up on the tax rate at all. But if we do, we cannot do that until our June budget. So we're now starting to spend money that we really don't have. 
We just heard an option about the art money, $10 million, that won't touch your fund balance. The school's fund balance should be healthy around four to five million, but it's okay for them to be that low. Ask their audit, ask it, that's what it's always been. And we've got ACC down too, because of decisions of spending money. Uh, so we need to look at the big picture here and we just, in 45 days, I believe we're buildings and uh, maintenance and I believe that's gonna be on us. The general statutes require us to have a fund balance and to maintain money to pay our bills. It does not require the school system to have a fund balance, period. And they certainly don't have a re statutory requirement to have a percentage or any percent of fund balance, unlike the county. I understand. I just hope the county's never in this position, that we have something boom and it takes all of our fund balance. I just pray to God that never happens. We've got we to be to vote, responsible right? to everybody, everybody including taxpayers. I agree. I saw the taxpayer. I agree. Mr. Tax reval. I agree. Mr. Chair, Let's vote. I think the county manager just commented, and, and um, Ms. Evans commented that at, we could have removed $5.2 million from the fund balance and still been above our 20% target. No, I didn't say it wouldn't reach our target. I said we're getting closer to violating our our percentages. And this is the only move, monies we've removed from the fund balance. It's not, we haven't been successfully or in succession removing monies from the, just to be clear for our constituents, we haven't been success in, in succession removing money from our fund balance. This would be the first adjustment to our fund balance. Okay. So. Ms. Turner, you want to state your motion? I think it's bounced all over. Can you state what your motion, in fact, is? The motion is to allocate $1,247,371.70 from fund balance to ABSS Capital Reserves. And the county fund balance. County fund balance to ABSS Capital Reserves and to so indicate that in the budget. And Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Are we ready to take a vote? And Mr. County Attorney, you think this motion is proper? I do think this motion is proper. Thank you for bearing with me. Thank you. All and right. I will say, Commissioners, that that will go to the Capital Reserve Project Fund where the expenses can be made. Right. You want to express that as part of your motion? <laughs> I'm <No>. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's, a, there's an understanding. Yes. <laughs> sure everyone is aware. Madam Clark, do you have the motion down? Yes. Would you repeat it? Commissioner Turner, seconded by Commissioner Thompson, moved to allocate $1,247,371.70 from the county's fund balance to the Alabama's Burlington School System Capital Reserves Project Fund and to um, indicate in so the budget amendment. All right, I'm ready to take a vote. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, signify by saying no. And I'm voting no. Okay, passes four to one. Okay. Do you have anything else for I do your report? I have one other thing, commissioners, if you'll indulge me for just a minute. I'd like to introduce you to our new budget and management services director, Ms. Rebecca Crawford. She is joining us. She started with us uh, on November 13th, and we are really delighted to have her. You will get to know her quite well. She's going to be <laughs> instrumental in uh, carrying this budget forward. We'll start that process with you very soon as you just adopted a budget calendar. So join me in welcoming Rebecca. We're happy to have her. Welcome. Thank you. That's all I had, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, we're now down to county commissioner's comments. Ms. Thompson? Um, we've all said a lot, and, and this meeting's coming to an end. And um, I would just like to add on to something Bill said about Orange County, because I know we've been tried to compare to Union County, Davidson County is always a county we can compare to, but I don't want us to compare to anybody else. I want us to be our own leader and alike in the state. And Orange County has 14 schools 
7,200 students, and their tax rate is 83.53 per $100. So it's a difference, you know, it's whatever you are. And, um, and so, like I said, we don't need to compare ourselves. We're all individuals, all entities. We just need to be the best at what and who we are. Thank you. Mr. Sure. Just um, I certainly don't like being in the position to have to allocate significant funds to ABSS outside of a budget cycle. It's not typically what I like to do. Um, but I can't not acknowledge that we're in a position where if we don't allocate more funds, <coughs> And they just can't pay their bills um, and they're going to default on contractual obligations and not be able to pay their bills and operations going forward because the money was spent on um, on capital projects going forward I can't say I agree with that but that's where we are and I think our our vote indicates that we're being responsible and allowing ABSS to pay its bills um, I would have taken the money the, the bulk of the money I would have reversed what we did today. We took the majority of the money out of ABSS's bond funds and some money out of PAYGO. I would have reversed that because I know what's coming. What's coming is roofs and HVACs. Uh, I don't know what that bill is going to be, but, um, but it's, it's going to be, we're going to have to plan that out uh, very carefully because it, the bill is coming due. Uh, and the way that I would have done this would have preserved more money, I think, in, in the bond monies in order to allocate those for what's coming down the pike. I recognize that people disagree with that. Uh, I got a lot of calls on both sides of this. It was about equal the number of calls I got on people being horrified that we would spend any more money with ABSS and people being horrified that we're, if we did nothing, we were going to end Western civilization. So... Um, <laughs> Um, this is the approach I would have made. It's a compromise vote today. I appreciate everybody in the room being very civil, for the most part, uh, and, uh, and working through this problem together. Thank you. Mr. Lashman. I have no comments. I said everything I need to say today. Mr. Coles. Well, I, uh, once again, I kind of concur. Uh, when Greg goes ahead of me and or, or goes ahead of Bill, uh, he, he he covers a lot of our territory, and that's that's fine. He, he does a great job. I'm very proud of having him on our board. And, uh, um, we, I, I, same issues I'm, I'm dealing with here. We've got bills. Uh, our ABSS has bills. They made commitments. Um, I think this is a band-aid on a gunshot wound, I'm afraid, and uh, looking forward to what we're going to get in about 45 days is what really scares me. Um, scares me for our citizens because I, uh, if if any if there's any indication that the numbers that uh, uh, Mr. Or Dr. Butler and uh, Mr. Bass came up with are even remotely close. We're going to be looking at a number that nobody wants to anticipate. So um, I hate that for our citizens, but part of our job, part of our job as commissioners, is to make sure that the assets of Alamance County, whether or not the county owns them or individually they're owned by ABSS, which is an extension of the county, those assets are to be maintained and taken care of. That's our job, and uh, somehow we've got to make sure we do that. I think we took some good and maybe some not so good votes today, but I think all of us, all five commissioners, support the children. We support the schools. Two of our spouses taught four years in the school system. Uh, the mold and mildew is nothing new. I personally claim mold and mildew in the schools for years. This is nothing new. Um, the audit just showed that they just referred to, just came out this past week, that they overspent by a long shot money they did not have. Um, we've got to have responsibility, and I'm not trying to pick on any individual with ABSS, but you can't just not show numbers, and it's found in an audit. 
yeah, that's that's time for investigations, and and I'm not calling for an investigation, but if I, if that was my business, I'd be having an investigation. Fine, you can't. Those sort of things can't happen, um, and I would never enter contracts that have no caps on them. And I understand the urgency argument. I understand what Dr. Butler said. But you just have, the Sasser contracts, I've read them, did have caps on them. The build services contracts did not. Consequently, we have a shortfall of millions, in this case, over five, six million dollars. That just is not responsible behavior. Um, if it happened in regular businesses, They'd be firing people, they'd be making changes, or they'd be going into bankruptcy. And we can't have that happen with the school system. I am really upset with one o'clock last Thursday. In my opinion, that um, whatever you called it was a cheap shot. You guys were setting up people to come in here and blow out county commissioners and ask for that. You didn't say blow up or blow out, but you asked for people to stack the, this room and things of that sort. That's not the way to do business. You don't have a conference or a public speaking event where you only are speaking. And I understand, Ms. Graves, that invitations were sent to county commissioners. How do we walk into that ambush and have any success? Yeah, we saw the handwriting on the wall. Do I get to comment? Not at this point. You can talk to me personally. And would, would, we were having meetings monthly with the two chairs, superintendent and county manager. We need to talk these things out we need to be working together, but another ambush is not appreciated. I just felt like that was a really low shot. I've already, and things were misrepresented. 19% when we pay 32%. You don't, you leave out debt service. That's a major component of the money we taxpayers and county commissioners pay but you just deleted that. And then you talked about school supplements and only $5,700 for teachers. Well, guess what? On, first off, it's not a set amount. If you're looking at the supplement, it's based on percentages. It's based upon longevity. So not every teacher receives the same amount. And everybody from chief of operations deputy superintendent and so forth, receives a supplement. On an average, you said 5,700. On average, each principal gets $17,533. That's a far shot from $5,700. Assistant principals, on average, $10,193. That's a far shot from the number you reported of $5,700. So much of what you did in the ambush Thursday was misleading to the general public, and I just don't appreciate it. I'm done as far as comments. Thank you. Okay. Motion to adjourn, have, Mr. Chairman. And I'll second it. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.com 
GovTVNC.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.